right, now it's time to get into WCW Thunder, May 17, Thunder. 2000. They don't have a theme song that I recognize enough to do this bit here. Sorry. Well, there's a cold oh. open. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a cold open. Come on. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Cold open. Come on. Oh, come this on. is hot. I don't, you can't call it cold. The this first, is hot. Well, the first one is the Birchit <laughs> logo. With, <laughs> it's the Birchit logo with heavy breathing behind it. That's how you start the show. <sighs> yeah. That's DPW style. That's weird. Yeah, that's fucking why they do that. You know, I wish I could explain to you this opening, but I'm going to try. But it's very difficult because there's a lot going on here. Um... I think this is all from Nitro. Is that right? I think that's right. If not, it's from like the last Thunder and then Nitro, but it's in that time yes. period. It probably is all Nitro though, and there's no talking during it. I so I'm assuming they had talking and then maybe the promo the music they had to change for the Peacock, but I'm not sure. I I'm don't just know, Tony. I thought that too, but it's so bad that I was like, I think this is on purpose. Oh, you might be right. You might be right. Yeah. Actually. I'm I'm not sure. But there is no we talking. We watched at all. this they Nitro don't. though, right? Yeah, I think it's a smorgasbord of different shows because I think the it's a mix of everything. Yeah, because yeah. Canyon, I don't, I think the Canyon thing they said was like a couple weeks ago. All right, well let but me run, check, let me sure. run down what happened here. So yeah, there's no voiceover in this cold open. It's just yes. music, not even like good music or it's just music. It just exists. It's loud as fuck. Yeah. So here's a couple of things that happened here in the last couple of weeks on WCW television. We had Sting handcuffing Vampiro to the cage and then leaving him and not attacking him. <laughs> We had Rick Steiner and Tank Abbott attack Scott Steiner outside with a two by four. Yes. We had a Goldberg monster truck run over a bunch of cars. A bunch of them, for real. <laughs> I legit wrote some cars. Horace Hogan and Hulk Hogan beat up Billy Kidman. Tori Wilson comes out looking incredibly sexy because she's fucking in love with Horace Hogan. <laughs> And as she's coming out to the ring, Horace Hogan's big ass head is looking over on the Tron. Horace then attacks Hulk Hogan with his steel chair from behind. Yes, he turns on Hulk because Tori Wilson is so sexy. So sexy, man. Like, <laughs> I, I hear him. I understand. Spot. Imagine if Dom Marie came through. Holy Yeah, I, I, I'm attacking my whole family at that point. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ric Flair then yells into a microphone. No, there's no talking. There's no. <laughs> no. It's just music. Ric Flair yells into a microphone. Vince Russo then tells the truck to cut his mic. We it can then, hear that. It then shows Vince Russo at Ric Flair's house with Charlotte Flair. <laughs> Ric Flair then yells at Daphne and David Flair. We, Jeff we can't Jarrett. Hear him. We can't hear it. There's no, there's no talking. Yeah, no, Jeff we just, Jarrett we it, yeah. <laughs> then hits Flair with a guitar before they go into a match for the World Heavyweight title. Flair then inside cradles Jeff Jarrett with a black t-shirt on and wins the World Heavyweight title. Black shirt, black slacks. For the 15th time, Ric Flair yes. is now the World Heavyweight Champion. Kevin Nash then <laughs> jackknife power bombs Jeff Jarrett through the ring. <laughs> through the ring. Through the after ring. That, right after the match, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's why, through that's the ring. I don't think we watched this Nitro because I don't think we've reviewed the Nash power Yeah, I, I don't not, think no. so either. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. Maybe it was just the sting handcuff of Vampire. Sure, yeah, yeah. Video. So then Eric Bischoff is talking to Shane Douglas because assumably Shane Douglas hates Ric Flair. Yes, and I, I assume that's where Bischoff was telling Shane Douglas that he is in charge of the show, but again, we could not hear the talking. There's no voiceover, it's just music. <laughs> but as you can see, there is a lot going on in the world of WCW right now. If and you're on television, you are in the middle of something. You are a, a unbelievable amount of things to consume here just in the first one minute cold open. Hot open, as Tony had said. Hot open, yes. yes. <laughs> I just like to think that it was an, an editing error. They like had voiceover, but they just put the wrong track volume and they muted the wrong I track. I like to think it was a creative vision, Tony. <laughs> I want to think they were editing it live right now because they didn't plan they for forgot. anything. There's a, there's <laughs> a producer right that's there. yelling. It's like, all right, now put the Rick Steiner footage. Put the Goldberg. <laughs> Tori Wilson coming out. Quick, right now. <laughs> Show Daphne sticking out her tongue. Now. Yeah, come on. Tony, please. <laughs> Make sure. No, don't let, them, don't let us hear them talk. <laughs> Turn off the fucking voices. Turn that shit down, B. <laughs> so now we get the WCW 2000 Thunder intro, which is just as insane as this cold open. Dude, I actually love this intro. I Me love too. this shit. Yeah, this no, is not, awesome. not as good as the Hollywood one. I, Dude, I Tony, that. that one sucked. Nope, you don't even know. <laughs> you weren't even alive then, bro. You're a fake fan. I, 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 
absolutely definitely was alive and Fake watching. Fan, come on, guys. Dude, fuck you. Well, here, here, here are my favorite parts. I wrote here, down some parts too. Go here on. are my favorite parts of this intro. Red Goldberg yelling <laughs> is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> yes, yes, that's uh, a good one. And my other favorite part is Buff Bagwell doing a little dance. <laughs> yes, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote Buff doing pyro point taunt. <laughs> I also liked Hogan walking around a white Hummer in the intro. And then there's also one very specific shot that it shows Hogan in the ring and it's close up on his face and it looks like he's wearing a wig. I don't know why that was on there. <laughs> they should have put him with no mustache. That would have been awful. Awesome. <laughs> so with Zack Ryder hair. <laughs> and yeah. Head. yeah, and fake head in his hands. <laughs> oh my God, yes. And then there's a countdown, which I don't remember at all either. Yeah, 10, 9, 8, and then it launches the show, man. That's pretty sweet. It was a great intro, for real, for real. So we got to go pre-tape here uh, because we need more context. We need more context. <laughs> so the New Blood arrive in a yellow school bus. They don't show up in a limousine. They don't show up in a <laughs> yeah, charter I bus. I didn't think of this. You're they right. show up in a fucking yellow school bus. <laughs> Nothing cool to say they have money or anything. <laughs> it's yellow school bus and on the side it says like New Blood Rules or something. <laughs> it's straight out of a movie from 2000. Yeah, they spray painted it. They spray painted New Blood Rules or something yeah, on the side. Bischoff and Russo, would well, they have also been on this bus or they just make the boys ride the fucking yellow bus? They are not getting on the bus, I'll tell you that. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, Russo's not getting on the damn bus. No seatbelts on this thing. He hopes it flips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, oh, we'll my. See. <laughs> yes, we'll see about that one. <laughs> So Conan immediately gets off the bus and gets in Shane Douglas's face. Shane Douglas is off the bus at the start, fanny pack, uh, with a notepad in hand. He's, I think he's taking. He's the teacher. He's a yes. Trip. He's he right. He's taking head count. <laughs> roll call. Yes, roll call. He's roll calling right now. Make sure everybody is in line. It's legit a school bus of kids. And Conan gets off and gets in Shane Douglas's face immediately, and uh, <laughs> Shane Douglas tells Conan that. Maybe he should watch the show because if you did, <laughs> you would know that Shane Douglas is now in charge. Conan should have said, I do watch the show. There was no voiceover. I can't hear it. Was it was just music. <laughs> How am I supposed to know what happened? I don't understand. Yeah, Conan legit says, nobody informed me, so why don't you go play with yourself? And then they all start fighting. <laughs> yeah, they start fighting, and then all of a sudden, Millionaire's Club, the MIA for some reason, <laughs> yeah. and the New Blood are now fighting by don't this school bus. Don't forget the filthy animals. They're in the New Blood, I guess, but they're fighting too. They like, they're like they kind Conan's of in it because yeah. Conan doesn't fuck with Shane Douglas at all right right so the, they're in the new blood so it's like a new blood split with conan and the filthy animals kind of right yeah the filthy yeah. animals are fighting new blood everyone Wolfpack, tony will oh yeah that's right yeah filthy animals are legit fighting every team and new blood are fighting the millionaires club as well as the misfits in action who are also in the millionaires club but not and booker t is in one of these groups yeah no, yeah, yeah. no, I he's don't not. Think, I don't he's think not. he is. Yeah, Booker T's oh, not in any group. Not yet, is he? Because he's yeah. about to. Yeah, not until later. Oh which, my! Which I I don't even want to talk about what happens later. I forgot about talking about. But how have we not seen that once yet on anything we've watched? We haven't. We have it's not. It's such a short well, run, I guess. Then, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, okay. I guess they decide this is stupid. <laughs> <as fuck." laughs> Whoa, that was a bad idea. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> By the way, seeing fucking Captain Rection and fucking. Kevin Nash. No, yeah, Nash wasn't there, Sting, was he? Yeah. Sting is Luger, out here. Luger DP's Sting. Out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hulk the Hogan is out yeah. here. And Chavo. <laughs> yeah, and Chavo and Captain Rection. Like, dude, how the fuck, I, I was wondering this, because like, how the fuck did they get all these guys on Thunder? Because they didn't pay them more to be on Thunder. So how do they get them to come to Thunder? What did they I mean, do to agree to get them on Thunder? It must have... I mean, you know, it's Cajun the next dumb. day. So they just uh, said, hey, jump on this school bus and we can get to the show. <laughs> Cajun Dome, I guess, maybe was a big yeah, house, too, I, I maybe. Think, yeah, I think they said Cajun Dome. Well, it was a f okay house, because as yeah. you see in the background, there's... They didn't even, <laughs> a lot they of didn't empties. even tarp it off. They just no. said, we have all these empty seats over here. Look at this. Yeah, maybe someone will show up. So, Hogan is out here walking around looking for something to do. <laughs> we're still on this pre-tape, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we're still outside. He's wandering around. He's like... Try oh, at one point, he, he fucking turns around. He grabs somebody and goes to punch him. He realizes this Brian Adams from Chronic who was on his side. And he says, oh, fuck, all right. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Dude, and then, dude, by the way, Brian Adams, he's just standing there. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> he just looks around. He doesn't punch anybody. Career, Tony. He, just, <laughs> he just stands there and doesn't do anything. He looks around like he has no idea what to do. Fuck 
Fuck that guy, right, Tony? <laughs> yeah, fuck him, yeah. Or not. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, Brian Hell Clark's yeah. okay. Brian Clark's no, Brian okay. Brian Clark is awesome, bro. Yeah, Brian Clark's okay. But we we'll like talk him. about Chronic Which one was Wrath? Too. Who was Wrath? Which one? Wrath Brian of Brian Clark. Clark. Okay, yeah, he's Brian really Adams was uh, crushed. A piece of fucking shit. Bra- yeah. A piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. That's right, boys. Thank you. Thank you for saying what needed to be said. So, yeah, all right. So, Hogan is walking around out here. He, he at one point was punching somebody and then just said, never mind. Where am I going, dude? So, Hogan then grabs a fanny pack off the ground. It was Shane Douglas's fanny pack. I was stunlocked on that for a minute because I forgot that Shane Douglas had. I said, who planted this here for this fucking scene? <laughs> it fell off, you know. Yeah, sure. So, he takes a fanny pack and he grabs a set of keys out of the fanny pack. <laughs> Whoa. And then Shivani informs us it's the keys to the bus. Yes, he's. I got How him, man. Shivani let's go. How does know this? How does he know this? He just, he just knows. Yeah, Hogan says, I got him, man. Let's go. And then all the faces leave with Hogan to go back into the building. Okay, so... Hogan takes the keys for the bus that they just arrived on and all filed out on and were preparing to be on this show, and that's what he that's his big gotcha. And he will hold on to them for two hours. <laughs> no one no one gets it from him. No one jumps him. Nobody tries to get them from Hogan. They just are okay with him well, having no one the keys knows he to took the bus. He did, they don't know. Oh, I see. They didn't watch the show. Tony like Shivani Conan. does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe the commentators or Conan would have watched the show. Well, they would yeah, they right. they would know, but there's no voiceover. <laughs> there's no audio. <laughs> there's just music. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so yeah, tonight we got Bobby Heenan, Mike Tanay, and Tony Schiavone on commentary. And Russo and Bischoff are not here tonight. Why yeah. why you think they just didn't want to work Thunder? They don't want to be here. Uh, yeah, they, to be here. No, they were they were doing other stuff, bigger things or something they were saying. I don't Bischoff's know. Bischoff's hanging out in Cody, Wyoming. He's fucking chilling. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to figure out what a That's podcast all is. <laughs> Every story here about Bishop, he's in Cody, Wyoming. <laughs> That's where the fucking, well, you have to understand. The seeing the mountains the and ball. shit. Yeah, yeah seeing the mountains with the yeah, dog. Cody, Wyoming. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah Shout yeah. out to Cody, Wyoming. Sarah Taker's right there, too, hanging out. In Cody, Wyoming? No way. <laughs> I well, so. Bobby Heenan here is trying not to fall asleep already at the desk. He's legit <laughs> looking down, eyes closed here at the beginning. He says, oh, whoa. Dude, he's legit the epitome of, hey, I'm on a hang on. I'm surprised he's even still here, like, doing commentary. He, he lasts till the end, doesn't he, or no? Well, they definitely replaced him with Hudson, Tanae, uh, and uh, sure. Mark Madden. Yeah, so, you're right. Uh, yeah, they Tough did. life. We got the Millionaire's Club Town Hall here to start everything off, and can you fucking believe it? Hulk Hogan, he took the keys. <laughs> He's got the keys with him. He's How will the they keys. know that their keys are gone? <laughs> <laughs> he only comes out and parades them around during his whole fucking game. Dude, I, I thought since it was a keys thing, I was like, they're going to do a keys on a pole match or something. They got to on a pole match. Um, Russo's not, not here, dude. dude. Yeah. Shane oh, Douglas, damn, damn. Shane bro. Douglas uh, forgot about that gimmick already, even though he was in one. <laughs> Shane Douglas about booked himself as Rick Flair with the world title, a 75 minute main event, but they got vetoed, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> did they not do that, Shane? How did they not have Shane? Flair didn't want to work him. That's what it was, right? They beat us. They said, he said, yeah, I got an idea. 75 minute main event, Ric Flair. I win. I go up. I beat <laughs> the shit out of him afterwards. They said, how about you get your ass spelunked <laughs> by Chronic, actually, yeah. you idiot? How about you look like the biggest fucking loser on the whole show all night? <laughs> look at you. And Hogan steals your keys. Yeah. And Tony hates you. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the damn music. So yeah, Hogan. We gotta music do the hits. same angle with Horace and Hogan with Tony oh and my Shane Douglas. <laughs> Shane Douglas, he turns on him. That's we have to break him out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Hogan, Hogan's music hits. Here comes Hogan and the boys. Hogan is showing off these keys as he's, he's dangling them from the keychain as he comes out. In the crowd, there's an F U N D sign. I, for the life of me, could not figure out what that means. Fuck you, New Day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, what's, the, what's the time, the time traveler. For, <laughs> <laughs> what's well, what does F U stand for? We don't know. <laughs> Foo. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Foo fighters. <I> don't <laughs> Dude, uh, this is even better. You know that Shane Douglas is running the show. The first thing that anyone says in the middle of the ring, Hulk Hogan grabs the mic and says, Hey, cut the damn music. <laughs> no, you can't do it. Yeah. No, he can't do it. That's he can't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it. He will fucking do it. <laughs> F-U-N-D, bro. That's my fucking line. You can't steal Shane Douglas' shit, bro. Learn how to work your gimmick, dude. No. He said, like, you know something, new blood. We just took the keys to your bus, boys. I hope they figure it out. <laughs> and now we're taking the keys to this house. 
Terry Funk is standing behind Hogan looking very lost. He's not sure where <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised <laughs> that they still had him up here working the hardcore shit. I was like, wow, all right. <laughs> what a great gimmick, though. It's so good. Later it is awesome that, like, they keep tra- – like, Bischoff hates Terry Funk. Yeah. He wants him to lose this belt so bad, but every single time he works a fucking match, he ends up just he winning gets away somehow. With it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, franchise, whatever you had planned for tonight, brother, it ain't happening. So go ahead and rip it up and throw it up. <laughs> All right, shit. Yeah, he Before just says, end- like, we know you're booked. I know you get the book, brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the entertainment of the fans out there, dude, we're booking this show tonight, so stick it. And then the fucking franchise comes out. His deep purple Jimmy Hart style <laughs> theme plays. <laughs> and he comes out and he says, God damn music. This is awesome. like definitive, man. This is like definitive. <laughs> yeah. like he was fired up from when Hogan stole his shit. He said, let me show you how it's done. I can't God believe- damn music. Hogan fucking taking it immediately is so fucked up man well he's booking the show tonight brother <laughs> or maybe not dude i don't know what's crazier who's the booking psych- the fucking show guys <laughs> <laughs> no matter who's booking hogan <laughs> <laughs> no matter who's booking always book it at the end of the night you or maybe that. i'm not dude depending on what about the show is brother yeah by oh, the yeah, end of the night not, i, I nothing to do with the show brother <laughs> by the end of the night for better and not for worse brother i was booking or maybe i wasn't or i probably wasn't dude <laughs> I'll wait to see the ratings on the weekend and I'll let you know. Let me see the quick ratings. We'll I see what happens. Read the Observer next week, dude. Let me see the Nielsen's. You might got those DVR numbers, brother? I'm calling Nielsen right now, dude. <laughs> I'm playing Jamie Kellner, brother. It was a lot of empty seats for a Shane Douglas book <laughs> show, brother. <laughs> he, goes, he goes on Bubble Up Sponge. Nielsen called me up, dude, and said this show was shitty. I didn't put this together, brother. Brother Nielsen called me, dude. <laughs> Major Nielsen. <laughs> and he had some words for me, brother. And they were good. And I'll tell you, they weren't good for it. That dude, Shane Douglas. Dude, I don't know what is a more fucked up visual. All of the members of the new blood standing next to Oh, hell yeah, James. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cut the damn go. music. <laughs> All the members of the New Blood standing together, or Hulk Hogan and Van Hammer standing next to each other. No, that's that's Mr. Stash or whatever. That's Major <laughs> Stash. Wait, would you please? He's not. Would you please get his division correct, you asshole? <laughs> Mr. Stash. He's got a shirt that says, "What's what's the shirt say?" I wrote it Ma- down. It's so Private Stash. No, no he's Major Stash. No, he's, he's Private Stash. He's, he's Major Stash. <laughs> Wait, oh, dude. His shirt, the back of his shirt says, "I want your stash." I don't know what that oh, means. Oh my. God, dude, like weed stash or like mustache? What's he talking about? <laughs> Both. Well, the name was a rib on him being greedy with the weed, Tony. It was Private Stash, but then he got, he ranked up. Dude, he ranked up. If y'all don't get his division correct, it's like sorry, when you prestige. Please I'm put sorry. respect <laughs> on his name. Well, Shane Delay says, maybe you haven't paid attention around here, but Russo and Bischoff put the franchise in charge of this damn show tonight. No. I, no, how can you say he's booking? <laughs> couldn't hear it on the free tape, brother. Yeah, no way. Shane says, I plan on ruling the show with an iron fist, Terry. And if you want to try to take it over, then I guess you should come up and try. So we're shooting Eamon already here. Terry. Bronk. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stash. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Hogan says, well, oh, we'll take it over in a second, little man. Well, first things first, Billy. <laughs> Major Dude, I- Stash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just out there. He's, He's hanging just, out. Okay. Just, <laughs> just He's going to take it over. He's going to take it over. I mean, you got to give it to him. Like They were they, trying with somebody here. No, they, no, they just put his ass out there, but like that's pretty sick. I mean, like. Major stash. He, yeah, he definitely got the purple heart. Major <laughs> stash. <laughs> he got, he's got 55 the little... Con- 55 confirmed kills. <laughs> he's got the red and yellow heart, brother. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> This dude's got the this dude's got the purple fart. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. uh, come on, man. That was private stash. This is major no, stash. He's Mister. He's still Mister to me. Don't, he's, don't he, to well, me. Tony has respect for him. He calls him by his legal name, Mister Stash. <laughs> That's his father. This is major. <laughs> stash. Don't call me Mister Stash. That's my dad. <laughs> Hogan says, first things first, Billy." And I was. For until they show Billy Kidman, I swore that Hogan dude, that, was still talking to Shane Douglas. Dude, he says like a run on one set. R- one yeah. Run on set. Yeah, he's like run on there. run with the great one. Yeah, dude, I, sw- I he thought says because like he- a sense. First thing first, Billy. 
Yeah, I thought that because Shane Douglas called him Terry, that he was calling him by Shane Douglas' shoot name, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Douglas, yes. <laughs> Bob? Billy Stash. <laughs> this is your will and testament, brother. I've heard how you've ran around and bragged about how you beat the immortal Hulk Hogan, dude. Yeah, talking to your smugly girlfriend, how you busted up Hulk Hogan and Slam Marie, brother. <laughs> God pops for that. Smugly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, smugly. You need to check the record book, son. You need to look at the win-loss column. How about a rematch? You and me at the Great American Bash, dude. But if I kick your ass, I get a shot in July at the WCW title. How the fuck does this have anything to do with Billy Kidman? That's how the linear. That's how the 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 reggae system works. You have to beat works, Billy Kidman you know? to get a WWE yeah, title like shot a in July. it's like a proving grounds match. You got to beat Billy Kidman. Proving grounds. Beat, <laughs> <laughs> beat Kidman. You rank up in the rankings. Well, yeah, you rank up for shot. private to major. <laughs> He's not gonna prestige though. <laughs> He's such prestige. Hogan is. For that's sure. what a proving ground match is in WCW. He's got red and yellow your, camo. So you get your rank. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, Billy, Bischoff isn't here to talk to you tonight. Lieutenant Loco, <laughs> he got his rank. He got ranked up, bro. Proving grounds. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, Bischoff isn't here to talk to you tonight, dude. Your girlfriend doesn't have a seat brought around your waist. How about you and me? This is when they finally show Billy Kidman, and I realized he was talking to Billy Kidman. I said, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Kidman says, uh, listen, Hogan, I know how much you care about the title because you're such a mark. <laughs> Dude, why would you say that? And your huge ego. So if that's what it's going to take, I'll beat you again at the bash. Nogan says, you know something, Billy? With that title dangling as a carrot, dude, I'm going to beat you one end of the world to the other. Oh, and also, don't you think I forgot... <laughs> Whore ass! <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, he did call whore ass. Whore, whore ass! ass. <laughs> it's, it's, and then this guy, I've never seen a guy that looks like this before. <laughs> no, this is a legendary type of human. You don't see this very often. This is a guy that's leveled up in the proving ground to Dude, get yeah. to where he's at today. <laughs> he leveled up to whore ass Hogan. <laughs> whore ass Hogan is different. You call whore. me Mr. Boulder, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant ass, dude. <laughs> so whore ass Hogan steps up. He's in. A, he's upgraded from the black vest uh, and the chain and the the jeans to black pants, red vest. But for with the, the new chain blood, stone. brother. Yes, the new blood. Course. The new blood. With red, NB on the back of it. Yes, yes, yes. Hogan What's NB just, stand for? I don't know. I'll uh, it out. I'm not too sure yet. I'm I just want. I want to let you guys know. Also, the the NB on the back of the jersey is not centered. It's not, because it, it looks like someone just drew it on. It's not like put it on is. it. It's like a Sharpie. It looks yeah. like a Sharpie. It's just fuck it's New Balance. <laughs> 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 Tonight, the little nephew is going to get his ass kicked by the big uncle right here tonight. The I'm going to kick uncle. your ass, Horace. <laughs> yeah, the, One of Hulk Hogan's mini nicknames, the big uncle. Yeah, the wood master, <laughs> the big uncle. <laughs> I remember him personally as the big uncle. Major uncle. You know, is everybody's got that one weird uncle. That's that's Uncle Hogan. Lieutenant uncle. Private uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Private uncle. <laughs> Holy. Well, Jarrett is here and he interrupts and he says, wait a minute. You bunch of Jurassic slap asses. <laughs> yes, he said the line. Nobody's doing anything tight until I get my stolen property back. Standing next to Jeff Jarrett is an extremely wet Hoover Dude Guerrera doused in all kinds of shit. That's the juice <laughs> fucked <Hoover> you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jarrett says, I want to know where America's most wanted deadbeat dad Ric Flair is out because I want my title back. Well... Here's Ric Flair. He comes up from behind Jarrett through the curtain and hits Jarrett with the title. I'm right not in front sure. Of all his boys. <laughs> yes, dude. I don't know what Flair's plan was because he hits Jarrett with the title and then the entirety of the new blood starts stomping him out. <laughs> it's because he has no fucking respect for these jabronis. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he I said, yeah, I'll jump all of them. I don't yeah, care. Poor ass. What are you going to do? <laughs> so they start stomping out Flair. The Millionaire's Club and the Mitzvahs in Action and everybody fucking else come up and make the save. There's a rug on the top of the ramp that everyone keeps tripping over because it's too many people on it <laughs> so it's knocking it up and then everyone brawls to the back except for Vampiro who gets left behind and the last shot you see before commercial is random members of the Millionaires Club taking turns punching Vampiro in the face <laughs> yeah well, Vampiro I, you know what man I have to give it to him for whatever reason they decided we're gonna turn you heel brother you were getting really over as a face we're gonna turn you heel brother we're gonna put you in here with Sting and I'm gonna tell you this is gonna be the worst you the people it will remember will this for being tank your popularity <laughs> you'll never recover from this brother uh, no way that? no way you will never yeah. ever recover from this and you will then fart live on pay per view <laughs> sorry well that he was, he was bringing it back that was the Vampiro comeback tour <laughs> we'll talk about Vampiro later but damn what yes, a we will. Yes, we crazy will. segment he gets later
dude, this is a crazy way to start the show. This is might be one of the top five most fucked up openers we've ever watched. Yeah, it literally doesn't stop from the beginning to like here. It no. doesn't slow down until no, the first it's, match. It's like a giant train wreck you got. Poor watch. ass. <laughs> <laughs> So backstage, Mike Awesome is screaming, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> Shane Douglas says, would you calm down? Conan <laughs> also asks, who the fuck called this meeting? <laughs> Shane, <laughs> Shane says, uh, Shane Douglas says, we got to be a bit smarter than these sons of bitches. Yeah, and Conan says, who called this meeting? Disco says, the franchise. <laughs> Conan says, well, the franchise, he's just a J Brone. You're a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Brown. I love that Conan. He just cannot stop burying everybody whenever he's around him. I love this guy. He loves it. He wants he to be does in that it on position. commentary too. He loves doing that. Yeah, he gets away with it too. I guess because boys of Nash or something. Dude, the best part about this is he's saying that he's a Jay Brown for Russo and Bischoff. But you just read Observers the other week of him that being he was around him. <laughs> fucking. Yes. What was it? Uh, Russo. A, he wanted to petition for Russo petition. To, yeah, to get the yeah. boys to say he was Russo was so, sweet. <laughs> so Conan's a Jay Brown for real. Well, the filthy animals all leave here because they want they don't want to fight for Shane Douglas and uh Tanae says I think there's bad blood in the new blood ew, ew. Wah, 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 wah. uh and they they show the filthy animals leaving this locker room and they show they follow them so long and I'm like that's fucking I'm like okay are they going to the ring then they cut to the ring and I'm like oh okay I guess they're not the dub music threw me off I didn't realize it was them coming to the ring no I didn't either I was like what is this weird music what's going on well, they got the new song it's, yeah, they do say it's a new song, but it's a dubbed version of dubbed the new song. New, new yeah, song. They actually gave him another new song. It's like the <laughs> longest universe mode crowd shot ever. I said, what is fucking happening here? Because they had to go through the, they had to find the new song. They said, fuck, we ain't got the new song. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the song? Where's the folder? <laughs> they must have been late also bringing up the big fucking curtain for their entrance. Maybe that's what they were doing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they yeah, sell it the curtain. Up. Dude, oh. Ray was going, so they, the Filthy Animals entrance is they shoot like them behind a curtain and you just see their silhouettes and Ray is fucking getting it crazy behind this curtain, man. <laughs> he is jamming. Yeah, they go crazy behind this curtain silhouette style and then a bomb goes off. Ooh, yeah, 100%. And then Juice comes down to the ring and he grabs the mic and he says, Finally, the Juice has come back to St. Louis, baby. We are in Louisiana. <laughs> this is not The Rock's gimmick. Fuck you, man. Yeah, fuck you, you stole it from me, you fucking bastard. Fuck Go. you, long time. <laughs> <laughs> Conan says, uh, we ain't afraid of nobody. Millionaire's Club, New Blood, MIA, get your punk asses out here. So, of course, here comes the Misfits in action. And they fucking, uh, they come to the ring, but before they hit the ring, they turn around and wave to the back to bring in the new cadet of the Misfits in action. That's right. It's Major Guns. Major Guns is here. Dude, Major already? Yeah, she, well, you know, she fucking the worked new way cadet, harder. The new recruit. <laughs> <laughs> she, got, she got recruited as a major. That's crazy. She, well, she's a, she, well, give her a couple more months, she's about to be a prisoner of war <laughs> to Team Canada. Oh, you're right. <laughs> she they Canadianized. Her, yeah, she gets Canadianized, they make her work out and shit. <laughs> what a fucking all, horrible all fate. All the Canadian things, yeah. Yeah, fucking Working motherfucker. Out. Yeah, major guns, private stash. Wait, no, is he major stash? There's, not, there's two majors. It's major He's stash. Ma there's There's two majors, <laughs> no, that's his me. dad, Tony. That's <laughs> his dad. Yeah. Okay. yeah, two majors. Well, Major Guns got like promoted crazy style. I don't she know if they even it. expected that. Well, that's why she got Canadianized is because they realized, <laughs> wow, she moved other ranks pretty quick. We got to get her. We could use her to the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> Which they do, man. It's they awesome. Do. They can work out can and shit. Canadianized. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, yeah, and of course, you got Lash LaRue out here, and okay. he's from Louisiana. You are the only person that I know understood what he said. Who? You. No, why would I understand that? <laughs> Dude, this is your boy. Lash LaRue. The Raging Cajun? The Raging Cajun. Raging Cajun. Of course, he's here in the Cajun Dome, and he gets up here and he goes, Bim -a -chum! <laughs> Get the gun to put the Cajun lemma! Okay. I said, Tony, what did you write down? <laughs> I said he's the guy from the water boy, the farmer guy, and he goes, Disky de Odo. Home is where you make it. <laughs> I wrote, Lazarus says, I'm home, I'm home, I'm in the Cajun Dome, and me and the boys from MIA only got one mission, and that is listen, let the ball talk away. <laughs> he got the goddamn home is where you make it. That's legit what he said. Dude, okay, what? so Lazarus does that promo, he starts the match, Deb... 
out loud goes, who is that? And I said, mm-hmm. oh, it's Lash LaRue. And she says, okay, so that's not Road Dog." <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's Lash LaRue. Said, she was convinced the entire match that this is Road Dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, this dude's name is Captain Erection. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. He's the captain, which Major well, might actually be higher. He was a general. Yeah, well, he's a captain now, and Major might actually be above captain. I'm going to look up how do ranks work. <laughs> yeah, look up army ranks or In whatever. the army. Okay, yeah, general is the top rank, I believe. <laughs> yeah, general is top. That's like 50. Yeah, I think that's right. But the captain's gen- like 20. Like, captain's low. Captain... Yeah, Captain is actually below Major. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, it's definitely below Major. So not only is this guy Captain Rection now, he's below Major a- Guns. It goes Private, then uh, Specialist, Corporal, okay, corporal. Sergeant, uh, Staff Sergeant, then there's more. There's uh, a lot. Master Sergeant, First Sergeant, right. Sergeant Major. Master Bader might be in there. Check that. E re- general oh, yeah, erection. Right, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to do. We're, hold on, we're doing something. We're over doing here, something. Oh, okay, all right. Sorry about that. General erection got demoted, is what you're saying here? Because now yeah, he's captain. Yeah. Okay. And major yeah, so, guns got promoted out of recruitment. <laughs> dude, out of recruitment, not even debuted. <laughs> Like, she debuted and got immediate. They were probably, like, surprised when they announced her as Major Guns. Yeah. They are probably like, who the fuck gave her the major position? And uh, the answer was Major Stash, who has <laughs> who might, the rights to do so. Dude, he might be the highest. Major Stash, until Major Guns, <laughs> might be the highest ranked MIA member right now. Dude, what about Corporal Cajun? Is Corporal low? Is, is Lieutenant? Corporal is below Major, yes. Okay. Lieutenant isn't the high? Lieutenant sounds high, though. Lieutenant Loco. No. It's a party in my city. Yeah. <laughs> I might have been wrong, boys. Now that I read this here, this is spoilers for later, I guess. GI Bro becomes the leader and then promotes Captain Rection to General Rection. Okay, so GI Bro, which is Booker T, he was the it leader of the and MIA. Becomes the leader after it was already established. Correct, and then. He's the one that gives Rection, his Rection rank. general. Right. And then Van Hammer is gone in like two months. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone in July. <laughs> so, okay. yes. Once again, this dude's name is Captain Rection. <laughs> uh, Major Captain Stash. Boner. <laughs> Major Stash hits the delayed superplex. Uh, Which out looked of the pretty sweet. It did look cool. I mean, Major Stash is beating up on Juice, who looks like a fucking child compared to Major Stash. Juice is... Okay, so ev- first off, everybody in Filthy Animals right now is wearing jeans. Correct. That's the well, Filthy right? Animals, correct. Well, Ray... Okay, this, this is, is so difficult to explain to people. So, Ray used to do the Bronco Buster and call it face full of stuff. Okay, well, Captain Erection is in the corner and he's not setting himself up right. <laughs> this, this is exactly like Kane not wanting to take the stink face. Yeah, so right. like Ray <laughs> signals that he's gonna go for face full of stuff, which and is Captain taunt, Rection, he does. It's like him taunting like he's gonna get a blow job. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> give it to you, right? So yes, he's gonna go for face full of stuff. Usually that means okay, you sit down in the corner. Well, Captain Rection doesn't do, doesn't do that. No. Um. So he goes over in the corner again, and he hits him, and he says, "He says I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give him the face full of stuff." <laughs> and then he doesn't go down into seated position again. He sits on the second turnbuckle like he won't go seated for some reason it's so fucking awkward and then ray just fucking does faceful <laughs> stuff full standing position standing guy. <laughs> it's unbelievable it's like he accident like sets himself up for a power bomb and that's what happens so he yeah. sets him up for the power bomb he gets him in power bomb state actually is how he catches him power bomb state <laughs> yes correct ray then gives him 10 punches the crowd kind of figures it out towards like the seventh punch they're like oh shit he's doing 10 punches here yeah uh and then it knocks out captain erection who then falls which in turn gives ray a power bomb yes very chikara <laughs> <laughs> oh you're gonna die <laughs> he belong there actually <laughs> captain erection so, power bomb, boom, Mr. Perfect's fucking theme song starts playing. Okay. 
kinda. Because, because I just want to. I just. I just <laughs> sure, also. Okay, 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 I just yeah. also want to state that <laughs> as the song is playing, Conan is trying to remember how to take a drop toe hold. <laughs> Right? And he is struggling through it hard in there. So while that's going on, Conan's doing the shit. You can see it, the shot is the Romer cam on the floor pointing at the stage. You can see fucking Sean Stasiak walking onto the ramp, walking down the ramp. Yes. Then Mr. Perfect's music starts playing. Then the camera cuts to Sean Stasiak, <laughs> who now is crouching down to try to hide. He's here. That's right. On, in the middle of the ramp, he is He's crouching here. Down. That's right. Me from the WWF is trying to sneak out with his music blaring <laughs> loud as fuck. And everyone in the ring is either trying to not pay attention to the music or has given up on the this fucking match. They, they give up. They they definitely give it up. It is on this. the most fucked up run in possibly of all time. It has to be seen to be believed. Strong Stasiak then pulls down the top rope as Chavo hits it. Chavo flies over it. That's Lieutenant Loco. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't mean to disrespect this troop. I apologize. It's, it's okay, man. I mean, you, you can control F next time and maybe fix your mistakes before you try to talk shit on, on I these Chavo and all these, just so you know. <laughs> I swear in the right. war! For the love of God! I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. I swear that even commentary has an issue. They, do, they, do. they say Chavo. They're like, no, it's Lieutenant Loco. Bobby Heenan says, oh, Chavo's fucking looking crazy out here. He's like, that's Lieutenant Loco. God fucking damn it. Put some respect on his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same exact thing. You know what's crazy is like this is definitely like a tongue in cheek group at this point, right. At, right here. Yes. In the next six months, they try to push them as a serious upstart babyface group. I think they're, this is where it starts. Like, yeah, they like legit, with the new blood. Yeah. Right, and to, and then they go into the Team Canada thing, and that's where uh, General Rection like <laughs> wins the U.S. title or yes. something. Right, right, right. Because yes, it was supposed yes, to be yes, a yes, big yes. fucking moment, but it's fucking General Rection. <laughs> For America, he's doing it's it for America, just, and he waves the flag. Yeah. He waves the flag. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I mean that's why they're putting Booker with them because they want him to be a legitimate group. No, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. But that's not that's not what fucking happens. But yeah, so Sean Stasiak DDT's Lieutenant Loco. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Right. On the ramp, kills him. Stasiak then body slams Lieutenant Loco over the top rope into the ring. Uh, and then I guess the match is over. I'm not actually yeah, sure. Yeah, they throw the match out. They throw the match out somehow. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the Filthy Animals and Sean Stasiak are stomping out Lieutenant Loco. Then Booker T comes out to make the save. Hits the 110th Street Slam on Ray and fucking annihilates Killed him with it. Killed yeah. him with that. That was awesome. That was crazy. Yeah, that was dope. Uh, he clotheslines Stasiak onto the ramp, and then music starts to play. And I'm unsure what the music is. I was like, is this the dubbed Misfits in Action song? Well, little did I know, it was the song to signal for newest recruit Major guns. <laughs> Newest recruit and promoted <laughs> within the group Major Guns. To begin ripping off her top and then... To reveal her boobs. Her titties are out. Major titties. Uh, and then she lays on top of Lieutenant Loco and gives him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to bring him back to life. And Mike Tanay remarks that she is able to do this because of her great lung capacity. Amazing <laughs> lung capacity on Major Guns, which is why she probably got promoted to Major. Yes, because, it's because you need a medic in the field. Of course. Uh, everyone, you play fucking Battle Bit, that's all you're playing with medics. Why did Booker T leave when Major Guns joined? Uh, let's see here. I can try to figure it out. Uh, Booker T. Oh, no, I'm not talking about the real reason. I mean, why the fuck would you want to leave? Major Guns is here. Oh, well, you know, his job was done. He yeah, realized that so. Captain Rection was good enough to lead this team. Or maybe he was too good to lead the team, <laughs> really, is what it came down to. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> he, he said, just... this dude's name is going to be General Rection. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, I got to go, bro. So the Millionaire's Club is backstage chilling, watching TV when Lex Luger reminds himself that he has to go kick Chuck Palumbo's ass. This room is like three different rooms. It's like the doctor's room, it's a locker room, and it's the catering area. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, DDP gets up and then Luger runs into him. <laughs> I don't think DDP was supposed to leave. <laughs> no, DDP was just like, whatever. And then DDP Luger was leaving the shot, he didn't care. <laughs> and Luger's like, yeah, I gotta go take care of something. They're like, what the hell? <laughs> DDP just walks out with him, yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. So we go backstage. Booker and MIA are here with Mean Gene, and this is where things change for the MIA. Yes. Uh, mean Gene says, Booker T, I couldn't help but uh, notice you have been covering the backs of the... And he turns his head and stares directly at Major Gun's titties. Nice. <laughs> and he says, 
Misfits in action. What's going on? And Booker T says, you see what's going on? Captain Rection has this shirt here that explains it all. And on his shirt, it says F-U-B-A-R. It says FUBAR. And he says the last three letters, Bischoff and Russo. The first two, you can figure it out. What does it mean, Tony? I don't know. I never figured it out. They <laughs> never told me. Fucking help me. Yeah, we just haven't figured it out, dude. I knew about fun books. It's classified information within the group. <laughs> oh, it's it's secret war documents. <laughs> you can only unlock the information There's once only you become one man a major. That can figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> How is Jesse Ventura not in the Misfits in Action? He was supposed to be probably, but. Wow, you know, didn't work out. He decided he, he was going to become a mayor or something. Union, and then they wouldn't let major him in. Major Ventura. <laughs> he would not have. He would not have been okay with being a major in that group. By the way, he's one of three of them. He'd have to be like the major <laughs> general sergeant or something. I got a leader of the world, <laughs> <laughs> President Ventura. <laughs> I got a bunch of friends I can bring into here. <laughs> Dick Marcinko making an appearance to help General Rection win the U <laughs> WCW US title would be nuts. For America. <laughs> yeah, for America to win the US title. Yeah, that'd be fucking unbelievable. Well, Booker T says it's time for Booker T to declare all out war. Oh my. Don't yeah, do well, it, Booker. He has the T back in his name, by the way, which is pretty cool. Okay. He's got his they, music. He too, actually I think. calls him Booker T. Oh, that's yeah, good. which was cool. I think the last time we watched, he was just Booker. He was just Booker and had yeah. different music. So he beat Big T then, right? For the T or whatever? Is you know, I really happened? don't remember how that I'm, fucking... I'm going to keep it real with you, Tony. He probably didn't do anything and they just started calling him Booker T again. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I like to think they closed the book on their storylines at WKB, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, they closed something. The whole company, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not, brother. <laughs> Uh, so next up here, we have Hulk Hogan versus Horace no, Hogan. No. <laughs> poor ass. Poor ass Hogan. Get the rank right. Oh, yeah. Poor. Sorry, sorry. Man, I fucking apologize. This is my bad. Thank you, bro. Control F in your docs and fucking get that right. <laughs> I am. Uh, and I'm F right now. I, I got you. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Poor Thank you. ass. Thank you so much. That was way too many letters that you typed yeah, I, I'm not good at typing. <laughs> Well, Hogan comes out with a microphone, of course. Hogan's entrance here is so fucking funny. I don't even know if anyone gives a shit, but Hogan comes out. Pyro randomly America goes off. Life. Yeah, I said, almost, almost TNA pyro too. A lot of fucking pyro. Hogan was obviously not expecting it. He looks behind him, then points behind him as if he was going, yeah, look at that shit. <laughs> that was cool, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they recap Nitro where Horace turned on Hogan by hitting him with a chair after Tori Wilson came out and was too sexy for him to turn down. Yeah, uh, that's for real. Then Horace walked out with Tori and got in a car with her, and Billy Kidman was not too happy about this. OG cuck. Billy yeah, Kidman. he's getting cut crazy, man. Yeah. Tori's well, got the nuts pants on for this show, by the yeah, way. Yeah, these are like... Uh, what, these are the baby maker pants, man. You can't be wearing them shit, baby makers. You can't be wearing those pants. That's just crazy, man. Well, yeah. Horace Hogan would change his entire life trajectory with these pants. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what happens. That's what happens when you wear these shits. Well, Hulk Hogan says, I'm not going to take anything away from Horace, because when Horace's father passed away, he had a few problems growing up, and I never laid a hand on him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, this is yeah. crazy. So Hogan starts off by telling everybody he wishes that he would have kicked Horace Hogan's <laughs> deceased father's ass more. I don't. Was he saying his father's ass or Horace's ass? No, he would Horace. have kicked Horace's dad's ass when they were younger. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what he was saying, right, Tony? You maybe you're right. When he was younger, he would have kicked his dad's ass more. But now, since he has the chance to kick Horace's ass, he's going to do that. Because because horses makes sense. Sure. horses dad right. horses dad is his brother Had problems right correct dude brother it was so it was <laughs> up. dude I was so confused because my brother passed away Horace's father passed away I was like what where is he going here he's talking I'm, about his I'm, brother I'm, Horace's <laughs> father brother my dude <laughs> <laughs> was he saying brother as actual brother or brother as his brother okay, dude he's his brother father brother James the reason I thought he was talking about <laughs> Horace because he follows it up by saying but tonight I'm gonna kick Horace's ass. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I'm going to kick your dad's ass, <laughs> but I'm going to kick your ass, right? For, because I'm going to I should have like kicked father. my brother's ass, oh, but sure. now I'm going to kick your ass. Because, I mean, why, I, I would have kicked your kid ass. Like, I would have whooped your little well, maybe kid he ass. Because he's older than Horace, so I thought maybe Horace was a little bastard when he was a kid. I should have beat your ass when you were How young. How old was Horace here? Uh, how old is Hogan here? It's like 45, 50, I don't know. <laughs> Horace Hogan? <laughs> Holy shit, really? Yes, he was old. No, no God way, no okay, way. Okay, he's 57 now. Uh, this show is oh, 2000. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so he's 35, correct. 
He was 35, How- yeah. And Hulk Hogan is- Hogan had to be 50 at least. Hogan's 50, 69 uh, now. Six Right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy number, so- bro. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Uh, so Hogan Wait, was- Wait, was he born? He was born 1953. Okay, so- So 47. Oh, he wasn't too much crazier than him. Okay. How does this work? So Hogan's nephew? Brother. <laughs> what the fuck? How old was this brother when he had Horace? Well, he was at least nine, dude. <laughs> what, the fuck? what the fuck is going on? Like, so, so Hogan had to take care of Horace after Hogan's brother, dude, oh, died, brother. Oh, sure. And Hogan took care of him, and then he should have whooped his ass, brother, but he didn't. Oh, should have whooped nice. Horace's ass? Because he was, yeah, yes, because he was grew I should have kicked he, my brother's ass before he died, dude. <laughs> But now I'm going to kick your better. ass until you die, dude. I like that even better. Your father died. I should have kicked his ass. I should have kicked his ass when he was still alive, brother. Dude. I definitely <laughs> thought that. I know that's what he said. Is if your okay, father yeah. was still alive, I'd kick his ass. But he's not. So tonight, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to kick. I'm going to whoop your ass for all the beatings I should have given your dad when he was alive. This is a transitive <laughs> ass whooping right here from the Hulkster, dude. <laughs> But again, it w- w- I should have taken it out of my brother. <laughs> brother. How old is Hogan's brother, brother? That's I what I'm know. saying, Tony. How would the kid, Horace, co- nine year old brother dude, had Horace? You Hogan. can't search Hulk Hogan's brother. You're not going to get real answers here. <laughs> I'm going to How old? How old was Horace Hogan's, Hogan's father's <laughs> Hogan's brother? Dude. dude. <laughs> Hulk Hogan oh, had Scott. one sibling, a brother, a brother <laughs> named Alan Balea. <laughs> Okay. He died in 1986. Okay. This is so 1980. How old, how old was he? Uh, I don't know. Hulk Hogan's brother was barely 40 years old when he died in the month of April 1986. What year was he born? Nine. Uh, uh, I don't know. No, he's Let's... 1946. He was born, right? Yes. Okay. He died in 86. So he was born in 46. So, oh, so Hogan's the younger brother Correct. of his brother. Yes. Okay, that makes more sense. In I'm my the head, brother. in my head, oh, Hogan's the older Hogan's brother. Okay. Always the oldest person <laughs> yeah. in the conversation. Always, well, he always yeah, looks the right. oldest for sure. He definitely looked older than Alan Balea, brother. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah. All right. So that makes more sense. Okay. So Hogan was not kicking that dude's ass. I'll tell no you that way. much. He was. Dude, Alan Balea was <laughs> fucking slamming Hulk Hogan's dick into the dirt. <laughs> <weekly>. dro- <laughs> dropping bombs on him. Yeah, that's oh, what yeah, he dude. He actually changed his story. That's what it was. Your dad used to beat the shit out of me. And tonight, I'm going to return the favor, brother, when I beat the shit out of you. Your dead dad, dude. That's fucking even better. Yeah, wow. All right, so. Only on Deadlock do you uncover the... Dude, True M-I-A story of the tree. Hogan family. <laughs> yeah, MIA and the Hogan family tree. I mean, what do you fucking more do you want? So St- Sean Stasiak, Tori Wilson, Billy Kidman, and Horace Hogan are all watching around a monitor. And Horace this is, deadlock. is getting ready to <laughs> go to the ring. And he says, come on, Tori. And Kidman stands up and he says, she ain't going anywhere. And Horace says, we had a deal. She's coming with me. Well, Kidman doesn't like that. He shoves Horace. So Horace punches him in the face and lays him out and then takes Tori and she goes with him. Yeah, she loves this man. She loves this bald son of a bitch. Never seen a guy like this before. <laughs> she, don't don't tune in to Monday Night Raw, brother. <laughs> Dude, Hogan coming out on Nitro saying, Tori, you got something you need to see, and it's a clip of Stone Cold. <laughs> Tori's a love no. jumping ship, dude. No. <laughs> Dude, Horace Hogan theme song is nuts. Like, singles Horace Hogan theme song here. I can't believe he had his own song. Yeah, that was awesome. Wow. (laughs) He's fucking crazy looking, too. Yeah, he is nuts, man. This match Um, was going for the record. I actually like this Horace. By the way, just real quick. I like this Horace Hogan look, actually. The red. I think the red works for him. I think it's a good look for him. It uh, it gives him more. Yeah, yeah. So, this match had to have been going for the record for most eye rakes in one match. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> this is unreal, the amount of fucking... They legit start the match by Hogan jumping Horace as he gets into the ring, and then they, I swear to God, they trade eye rakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you'll kick low blow. Dude, okay, Hogan goes to the corner selling the eye rake, then it looks like he starts backing his yeah. ass up on Horace. <laughs> he does! 
Because he's trying to find in between his legs to blow blow him, but he can't do it, so he's just rubbing his ass on Horus. He's very bald in the corner, too, by the way, because his bandana got knocked <laughs> off. Yeah, come on. That's his brother, Horus, that did that, by the way. Knocked his shit off? That's come true. On, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what uh, Alan Belay did to him, too. He probably, <laughs> he probably shaved his head like that as a child and fucked up his shit for the rest of his life. While he's sleeping. <laughs> Alan Belay ripped him crazy as a child. <laughs> he, he, he probably he probably shaved his shit and then Hogan, <laughs> dude, 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 that's why Hogan started clanging and banging those weights because he got bullied by his brother. <laughs> and Hogan laid started a band, taking steroids, laid a bandana on his coffin, and he said, "Your kid is mine, brother. <laughs> I'll take I'm care of your ass." <laughs> I'll beat the shit out of your son, brother. <laughs> I want to make sure he doesn't make it in his business, brother. I promise you. Oh, whore yes. ass. <laughs> oh. I'm going to call him whore ass. There's nothing you can do about it, dude. Dude, the Balea family is deep like the, the, the bloodline. Almost. In the crowd now. Yeah. Me. <laughs> dude, I thought that... Uh, I thought line. that... I, yeah, I thought that, uh, like, the Horace Hogan thing, I thought that there was nothing to do this at all. And, like, turns out there's, like, a whole lore story here. Um, <laughs> it's really uh, deep. Uh, yeah, they didn't explain this. Maybe a video package or something would have, like, helped me understand this a little bit more. If they would have just let us in listen to the interviews. <laughs> Please don't have a voiceover, I'm begging you. Well, Hogan, Hulk Hogan, I can't say Hogan because there's two Hogans here. Yeah, you're if right. If I say Hogan, I'm talking about Hulk. If I say Horace, I'm talking about Horace. Okay? If I say Horace. brother, I'm talking about Hulk Hogan. If I say dude. Dude, I'm talking about Horace Hogan. <laughs> well, is it Hogan's brother or which brother? Well, it's dude. brother and dude. Oh, okay. Well, brother's in the red corner and oh. uh, yeah, Aka corner brother, Al <laughs> <Owl> corner dude. <laughs> <laughs> Referee red shoes. Yeah, of course, 100%. So Hulk Blair, hits the brother. fucking axe bomber in this match and he throws he Horace to the floor. Then Hulk pulls out a table. And I said, holy shit. And Horace cuts him off. He said something. In my mind, for the entirety of the rest of this match, I'm like, how in the world are they going to do a spot through a table on the outside? I should have figured it out way sooner. <laughs> well, whatever you thought definitely wasn't what happened. No I know it wasn't. Way. I couldn't have no came close, James. No I couldn't have came fucking close. Oh, by the way, by the way, Heenan at one point says Hogan abused Horace. He said no. that he made him do things like do the dishes and mow the lawn. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. And Alan, <laughs> Alan Belair never fucking wanted to do that shit. Mike today says, Brain, those are chores. <laughs> And Bray says, no, they are not. That's why you have servants. <laughs> I thought it was good lines there. That is fucking tremendous. <laughs> Hulk takes his belt off and he has uh, f flashbacks to Alan Bollea doing this to him as a child. He's he actually got this out. gimmick from, from his brother. <laughs> his brother beat the shit out of him. He whips Horace on the back a couple times and starts choking him out with it and gives him the shittiest punches ever to the head, so much so that they had to change the camera angle so you couldn't see them. Hogan, Hogan, you know, Hulk Hogan used to walk to the fridge to get a slice of Little Caesars in a glass of water and his brother would say, you! And then take the belt and off and start down. beating the shit out of him. Little, little bald shitty Hulk Hogan as a child. He just sit out of him and he did the pose with the double bicep and the fucking thing. And he's, Hogan's used that for the day He dropped the leg after. on him and sat on him for a while. <laughs> So, fucking Hulk clotheslines Horace with the belt. Uh, the crowd is... By the way, through this whole show, the crowd randomly pops. I swear this is dubbed in. It's just random. Oh, and there's No, they're nothing just excited randomly. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm like this sometimes in the crowd, you know? Well, yeah, Hulk right. crotches Horace on the top rope. Then he gets distracted by Tori Wilson, which leads to Horace glomming him from behind. And then Tori hugs Horace and kisses... Uh, Horace kisses her on the cheek which sends out the most enraged Billy Kidman ever. Billy Kidman comes out, jumps Horace. Mickey J, the referee, is not calling for the bell. All of this is illegal as he watches Kidman sure, beat the shit out of fucking Horace Hogan. Hulk gets back in the ring with a chair, hits Horace, then he grabs Billy Kidman and hip tosses Billy Kidman <laughs> over the top rope through the table on the floor, and then What's, he pins Horace and wins. <laughs> dude, the cameramen don't even get the they angle. They have to let. They have to. It's like you see the post, the turnbuckle post, and then yeah. like he you flies see him to the fly table into barely. Hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, it and sort then, of made it better because all you hear is this fucking loud crunch. crack. Yeah, yeah, it's insane looking. Yeah, man. I was like, holy. And then so he hits Horace with the chair. Horace has to sell while Hogan hip tosses Kidman over the top of the table, and then he turns around and pins Horace. Fuck, what a crazy <laughs> match this was. It's unbelievable. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, Tori yes. 
is in the ring now. Checking on Horace. <laughs> yes. And uh, not Billy Kidman, who went to the table. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, her boyfriend. Hogan then decides to grab her by the head <laughs> and then signals that he is going to punch the shit out of her. He's going to punch her in the face and he's looking for the crowd's <laughs> acceptance and cheers. The more you cheer, the harder you know, I will punch her in the face. You know, guys, he's going to punch her. He's going to punch her. <laughs> the crowd is marking out. He's like, I'm going to do it, dude. Then he winds up. <laughs> he winds up like a cartoon character. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think he does this in the games. This is a movie does. Yeah, so he doesn't punch her. Instead, no. he kisses her, Big which is style. arguably very much worse. She, she definitely would, would rather, much rather just, take a punch to the fucking face. punch me in the face. Yeah, Hogan's <laughs> notoriously bad puncher. <laughs> uh, Hogan, yeah, he would have put his hand up, too. It would have been nice. It would have yeah, been a very easy bump super for protected. you. Um, Hogan then kisses her instead. Tori falls to the mat, and then uh, she, of course, loves it because the Hulkster loves to have sex with women and can't get enough of having <laughs> sex with women. women. all want to have sex with Hulk Hogan, too, they, dude. They can't That's help true, it. Brother. Yeah, he wrote yeah. that one in there because he's booking the show that day. <laughs> and Hulk then turns around after kissing Tori, uses his entire forearm to wipe off his mouth and goes, Dude, ta! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The biggest sloppy wet kiss wipe of my life I've ever seen. Yeah, she definitely had little mustache pieces in her mouth after that, That's too. That's nuts, dude, man. Just want to let you know, I was telling you, you know, Hulk got sloppy seconds from Horace, by the way. He, oh, Horace you're right. Her, so Dude, Alan Belay was definitely fucking all of Hulk's girlfriends, too, growing up. <laughs> he, was he was railing yeah, all of he them. Was, he was laying down Alan Mania, brother. <laughs> Clanging and banging. was being laid down, dude. Constantly. <laughs> Clanging and banging. The wrench is his penis, by the way. Yes, Tony! <laughs> Tony, you are so <laughs> right. <laughs> Just said to let you know. Nobody does it like deadlock. We, we tell you everything that's going on. You catch up. We have the Lord. You never miss out. You never miss out. So Lex Luger asks an arena attendant where the closest gym is and then rides off in a car. Dude, he leaves the, the gym building. Is, you just go up and take a right. That's it. He says, oh, shit. All right. Damn. Well, that's very good. That's I was it. there just... earlier. I just forgot. <laughs> so backstage, or I guess this is not backstage. This is in the or, gym. Or maybe in it is backstage. Gym. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. Uh, this is the Body Masters gym. <laughs> oh. um, and Chuck Palumbo is there getting a pump, brother. Chuck's are doing one of the big three, of course, which is incline <laughs> bench. <laughs> As we all know on this show, I'd yeah, love to the, do the yeah. best one. Well, I think the best one's the Ben over barbell row. Ben over barbell <laughs> row. No, I don't want to get in the argument right now. That's yeah. right, Tony. We don't, we'll save for another time. Yeah, that's a good idea. So <laughs> there's a little spot guy. Got a little spot guy for his incline, um, and then Lex Luger comes in and replaces the spot guy. And to be honest with you, he very nicely spots Chuck. Doesn't touch it until the end when it's done. Re-rack touch. Very yeah, nice. This, uh, this spot guy sounds an awful lot like Lex Luger randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his be. voice is very distinctive. But or maybe okay. not. <laughs> maybe not, dude. Uh, yeah, but then Lex grabs a pole and then hits Chuck Palumbo with it. Right in the chest with it. He could have just dropped the fucking bar on him. No, he just smashes him with more gym equipment. It's because he's a good gym brother. That's nice of him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like, I'll spot you real quick, dude, but then I'm going to hit you with this pole. There was other people in this gym that scattered like a fucking GTA fucking scenario. <laughs> they ran away. <laughs> they ran away. Luger starts fucking him up all over this gym. He hits him in the head with a water container. Then he pushes Palumbo into a like a towel basket cart and starts beating him with a 40 pound plate. <laughs> Dude, the whole time he's going, huh? 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 <laughs> Just picks up the plate and starts smashing him in the fucking head with it. He says, You want to be a main eventer, huh? <laughs> and he then is. He is. That's his name. He ends. It is. That's true. He was. He was promoted to that. From yeah, the main event. Proving ground matches got him there. AEW <laughs> Dark McCarter. <laughs> He's, He's about to get legend status. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Luger then says, uh, "You know, you got to finish off your workouts with a protein shake and dump somebody's fucking protein That's shake all so over Palumbo's nasty, face." Man. It was gross looking. Yeah, Dude, I know that nasty ass protein shake fucking stayed on his body, smelling like Probably, shit. Yeah. Forever. I would have just opened my mouth and went, "Ah!" So Ralph is and Norman Smiley are selling FUNB <laughs> shirts out of the trunk of a car. Not only are they FUNB shirts, James, they are bootleg FUNB shirts. They made these. Yeah, Ralph is a big yeah. shirt guy. And the sign says T-shirts for sale. Shirt spelled S-H-E-R-T-S. And if you buy a shirt, bro, he's trying to get booked on WCW. I don't know if you got him down at all. <laughs> I'll bring him to you. <laughs> Ralph is... Ralph is... 
Also, There's no way you're showing up at the Cajun <laughs> Dome, okay, bro? <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, Ralphus is concerned here, though. Yeah, they're going to get fucking arrested for selling bootleg shirts out of the car outside yeah. the arena. Yeah, I Norman can confirm Smiles. that you will not be arrested. You're okay. <laughs> well, Earl Hebner fucking will give you a different answer to that, brother. No, Earl Hebner's fighting us all the time. He's good. Yeah, that's true. He'll get fired, says, but it don't listen, matter. Listen, man. Don't worry about it. You want to eat? Well, unload these t-shirts. They're selling like hotcakes. And so that's, they're selling some shirts here. So now we have Terry Funk versus the cat. We, we didn't know it was that at first, though. Terry well, Funk had an open challenge. Really, well, I everyone guess, right? tonight has an open challenge. It seems like <laughs> the, no, but nothing's been booked. Yeah. Hogan said, we're booking the show. Didn't book the show. And Shane Douglas said, ah, fuck. All right. I guess we're not doing the matches I booked. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, Russo and Bishop aren't here, so it's anarchy. So what do, you, what do we do? Uh, the inmates well, took over the well, asylum. Well, you know what's Tony. funny, actually, Tony, is the show's probably actually better, which is crazy. Yeah, because of this? Yeah, yeah they're not being here. It's, it's, it's the best WCW show we've watched ever. Of all time. Yeah, well, Terry Funk calls out the cat, and he says he wants you to dan he wants him to dance his silly ass out here right now, and he's going to give him a chance at the hardcore belt. Not next month, not next week, not tomorrow night, but right now. So come on out if you got the guts. So the cat comes out. I'm the greatest. The he, dude, his music is playing, and they cut to a kid going absolutely fucking He's going bad going shit, crazy. man. Yeah. He awesome. is fucking getting it to this song. And Cat says, let me tell you something, old man. I'm much too pretty to be in a hardcore match with you, uh, but I'm going to be in it anyway. Somebody call my mama. I'm about to be an old piece of junk. By the end of Cat's promo, Funk has made <laughs> his way to the top of the ramp. He's in Cat's face, and he punches him in the face. Dude, dude it's funny. <laughs> Oh, he's telling him to get up here. He's saying, get your ass up here. I'll wrestle you. And he's like, he's right in front of him. When yeah, he's Tony, there. it's literally exactly. It's like, it's seriously like a comedy spot. If you bring yeah. your ass out here, I'll kick your ass. Terry Funk is literally standing in I front just, of him. What are you, you going to do, stab me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just like to believe Terry Funk didn't follow the script. And he was like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to fucking kick his yeah, ass. He punches him in the head and DDTs him on the ramp for a two count. This is also false count anywhere because hardcore title, right? Yes, sure, that's yes. correct. Well, okay, I mean, sure. also the rules just are whatever the fuck, you know, you'll yeah, kick I me, I don't care. Or <laughs> Me, I don't care. Yeah. Like you do whatever you want. Any point. In, whatever. Fine, whatever ends cool the too. segment in the right amount of time they were given, <laughs> you're fine. Oh, they didn't. I bet you that. They did not. Oh, no way. Funk then drags the cat to the back uh, and grabs a laptop and smashes it over his fucking head. That's a 2000s era laptop. That had to be heavy. Yeah, and Shivani says it was $3,500. And today <laughs> says, Holy shit. What was that, your laptop or something? And Shivani <laughs> says, No. And that was it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's all right. Good line. Um, they go over to the corner here. Uh, that's where Funk gets a trash can and throws it on him. A lot of trash can spots. Yeah, tonight. I guess because like the venue just had an abundance of them around, so he just sure. kept finding them and said, "Fuck it, I'll just." Sure. Shouts yeah. out to venues with trash cans. Keep it up. Yeah, that's cool, of you guys. <laughs> uh, so Cat then grabs a popcorn bag and throws it on Funk, and then as he does it, he almost <laughs> slips and dies on the concrete. Yeah, they dumped like the shit out of the trash can in spot four. I think it was like the trash juice. juice? Yeah, the yeah, juice on the feet. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's rough, man. Uh, so, Cat puts Funk under a bay door and then <laughs> says that he wants him to die. <laughs> and on commentary, they're like, oh, what would happen if he pinned him there? Well, he doesn't, so don't worry about it. Uh, Cat then throws Funk outside into a bunch of pipes. And then Funk throws a pipe and it hits Cat in the head. Dude, it's pipe from Pipe and Drape and he launches it at him and it hits him. <laughs> Those pipes are clack, 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 clack. It's like the loudest pipes you've ever heard in your life. It's not a real backstage brawl unless you fucking go into the pipes from the Pipe you and got Drape. To. Yeah, you you got yeah, to. yeah, really. You have to. And they always yeah. have an abundance. Way more than they should. <laughs> As you should. Cat then grabs a fucking broom or uh, I'm sorry. It's what was it? It was a, a rake. Cat oh, yeah, grabs a rake, rake yes. and does a lightsaber sequence with it and bops <laughs> Funk on the fucking head with it. That was tremendous. Uh, Funk and Cat fight over to Ralphus and Norman, who are still no. selling t-shirts, and they fuck their whole merch table <laughs> Dude, up. Dude, Norman Smiley is so unhappy. He's like, Cat, fuck, what are you doing? Oh, man, come on, man. I'm trying to make a living. I'm, it's my business. I'm this trying is to the, make a living. This is the number one indie faux pas is when you do an outside brawl and you fuck up someone's merch <laughs> fuck table. Fuck up the merch table, yeah. yeah. You, owe them, you owe them money now. You have to pay them after the show. Dude, not only do they fuck it up, Terry Funk legitimately picks up the table and hits Cat in the head with it. He fucking smashes him with it. Then Funk grabs a chair. I guess this was Ralphus's car they were selling the shirts out of. Funk starts smashing out Ralphus's car windows with a chair <laughs> just because. Yeah, I don't that's know crazy. Why he was doing this. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. That was nuts. It, it, what's worse is probably was Ralphus's car, and Funk did this for real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. price, fuck you, pay for it. Who was the Who was the person who sounded like Don Vito? Was it Ralphus? That was. Yes, yeah, 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 that yeah, was yeah, Ralphus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was crazy, man. <laughs> Uh, Cat yeah. then goozles Norman Smiley into a fence, <laughs> and Norman starts screaming. Ah! Dude, 
<laughs> yeah, because because Norman's trying to like tell him, hey man, like fucking chill with this shit. So Cat turns around and straight up double goozle a Homer Simpson style fucking <laughs> chokes him against the fence. This is after, by the way, I think they're fighting on top of Ralphus's car, and Cat throws Terry Funk off of the roof onto the trunk. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah, yeah he kind of falls down onto it, and then they have to <laughs> yeah. open the trunk back up because they- he fell down onto it. Ralphus like has to open it for some reason. I don't know why Ralphus was helping them. <laughs> yeah, he was just you know they got the time on the side. They gotta get out of there. So they open up the hood of the car. Cat goes to stuff Terry Funk into the trunk. Then Norman Smiley hits the cat in the back with a chair, knocking him out. Fucking cat falls on his back inside the trunk. Terry Funk lays on top of him and wins. Dude, this guy <laughs> keeps fucking winning. This what is a crazy. Great gimmick. No, I like this too. Yeah, Eric. So it, people who don't know Eric Bischoff. Didn't want him to be the champion because he's old. He's, he's old and he represents yeah. a fucking gone by era wrestling. He said, we yes. have to get the title off of you. But Funk just keeps winning exactly like this. He falls on to Cat in or the trunk of a car. And, him. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and it's not even like they're really trying to help him. It's more so it just like happens to be that they're way. in a feud with somebody and like they'll end up beating him and fuck with him. <laughs> it's awesome. I really like it too. So Mike Awesome is backstage walking with a stretcher, and that's how they address it on commentary. There's Mike Awesome walking with a stretcher. That's all they say. I'm like, what? What the fuck is going on? Uh, we come back from commercial. Norman Smiley and Ralph are fucking worst fears come to life here. No, they're now no. being arrested for no. selling bootleg shirts in the bargain no. lot. Oh, yeah. Norman says, dude, Norman has a crazy line here. A guy comes up and Norman says, oh, you want to buy a shirt? And he says, no, you are under arrest. <laughs> and then Norman's defense is, this is a misunderstanding. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should work. <laughs> and then Ralphus gets arrested not for selling shirts, but for indecent exposure because his ass crack has been out the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And Ralphus says, you're dumb. I have to go home. <laughs> you have to you have to buy a shirt before you can arrest some stupid cop, man. This idiot. Bro. Yeah, fucking idiot. Idiot. Undercover cops shutting down a shirt selling operation in the parking lot is crazy. Yeah, what are you gonna stop a lemonade stand to you, son of a bitch? What's wrong with you? Well, man? they should maybe zone for that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, at, Norman is in handcuffs trying to get out of this by saying, I do the big wiggle. Haven't you heard of me? <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly, it probably should have turned it around for him. Yeah, come on, man. I heard of the big wiggle. Hell yeah, you're on you're under un under arrest. Well, now it's time for the Mike Awesome Town Hall. Holy shit. Yeah, so he is the career killer Mike Awesome right now. Yes. Not the Canadian killer. Not that 70s guy. Right. Yeah, not the fat chick thriller. He goes through so many gimmicks in, like, record time. Record. Yeah. He's got to have yeah. the most gimmicks in record time. This is, has to be, like, a Guinness World Record. In a year. Maybe not even. Yeah. So... As everybody knows, <laughs> Mike Awesome has crippled Canyon, and he threw his butt right off the top of that cage. He refuses to say ass. I guess you can't swear on TBS in 2000. But Ho- Okay, so Hogan also usually refuses to say ass, but for whatever reason, this whore ass oh, I like, guess that's fine. has got him going nuts. He was saying, I'm going to kick your ass. Oh, oh, he did say a kick your ass. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's fun. right. Yeah. I th- usually he says, but, but I think like he got so fired up because like he finally yeah. gets payback on with his brother. Well, his Mike, kid. you better not say ass, dude. That's my thing. <laughs> I crippled Canyon <laughs> and threw his butt right off the top of that cage. <laughs> so Mike Awesome is having an ambulance match with DDP at the Great American Bash pay-per-view. I guess he's been having a litany of ambulance matches. That's his thing as well. Yeah. It, you know, like the walls thing is the table. Yeah. Right. His the- thing is the ambulance oh, okay. match. Well, he's having one tonight, too. But before we get to that, he needs to tell DDP that he can reserve a room right next to Canyon at the hospital when he's done with him. (laughs) That's what he's going after the bash. Now, Mike Awesome also has an ambulance here. He brought a stretcher to the ring. He says, well, I'll have a match tonight. (laughs) (laughs) How? How do you not have a match tonight? It's impossible. (laughs) Because if anyone wants to come get some, get your ass out of here. And why did he carry the stretcher himself? Because he didn't have a match. (laughs) The stretcher never gets used. Well, he had to put it in the ambulance because he Leave brought the there. ambulance too. Leave no, he brought the ambulance. He stole an ambulance, no stretcher. He had to find a stretcher, then put the stretcher in the ambulance. He okay, said, right, now enough. I can have my match. That doesn't make any goddamn sense, but I'll take it. No, not even a little bit. <laughs> so the sirens go off. Fucking Shakira and number one frequent Deja are here. Scott Steiner's here. Cut the damn music. No, no, <laughs> damn it. Shane Douglas needs some respect. Now, before you start challenging people in the back, you better realize who's back there because you don't have what it takes to meet me, boy. And I do mean boy. 
<laughs> now I'm not part of the New Bloods. Part I'm not part of the Millionaires Club. <laughs> my only alliance is to my freaks nationwide. Yeah. <laughs> and now after I punch your punk ass in the ambulance, yeah. I want to tell yeah. that New York son of a bitch, Rick Vince Russo, who kicks your ass on thunder. <laughs> I'm so glad you hit all ambulance, Parda, and Rick Vince Russo. <laughs> God, this is the best yeah, of all I mean, time. They're right here, man. He's got to be. I mean, he's got to be the greatest. I mean, when you re- when you bring up the greatest, if you don't say Scott Steiner, fuck you. You you are dumb, and yeah. I hate your guts. I get another level excited when I know Scott Steiner has a microphone. Me too. It it actually like it, it, like there's a serious like brain imbalance in my head that like. <laughs> I get so crazy excited. Yeah. I start like fidgeting. It's a dopamine like, oh my fucking yeah. God. This is going to be it right here. When I hear the sirens, I see fucking number one freak Medeja. I know I'm in for a good time. I'm unfamiliar with uh, Shakira. Shakira was here early when we first started watching okay. uh, stuff. With Purple Warrior, I think Shakira was in the ring oh, too. With oh, yeah. Shout yeah, out to Shakira. Shakira get, on she, you get our love too. Yeah, but you know, number one freak. Number Medeja one freak, of course. She can't. Real. I mean, how, she she maybe Shakira will get fucking promoted at a proving grounds <laughs> yeah, match. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see about that. It's, it's not looking good for her. I tell you yeah, that. I guess not. Uh, as we get to the later part of two thousand, where everybody loses their job. That's <laughs> right. Uh, no, not looking too good for her. We'll see though. So Steiner hits the ring, Manhattan drop immediately. That's crazy. Steiner then hits the belly belly in the corner and does push ups. He's just doing all the classics here. So just to be clear. Because commentary also doesn't know, this is an ambulance match. It is. There is an ambulance parked next to the stage. There was a stretcher at the top of the ramp, but there wasn't one when Scott Steiner made his entrance, I don't think. So Mike Awesome powders, throws a chair in the ring. Dude. And then Steiner catches it and then throws it as hard as he can <laughs> at the floor, bouncing it towards the commentary it desk. Le- he legitimately, I swear he was trying to shoot hurt Mike Awesome with that. It was, yeah, it was rough. I've never um, seen a chair thrown that hard before. Mike Awesome then mule kick low blows <laughs> Steiner just like Hogan. Which, that is, yeah, this, surely, like... this surely is no DQ. It's an ambulance match. So I'm okay yeah, with that maybe. one. maybe. I'll take that one. Well, they don't know it's an ambulance match. <laughs> oh, so, well, maybe the ref does. Well. Well, <laughs> <here we are. laughs> No bell, I don't think it is. Sure. Uh, I really know. There, well, there is a bell at the end, but I can't tell you is why. Is there a bell? Okay, there sorry. Is, I must there is. Yes, there is. Yes. I, trust me, I can't tell you why, though. <laughs> I know why. I'll well, I can you. tell you why, brother. Oh, sure. Okay, so, good. Uh, Mike Awesome hits the awesome line off the top. Yes. Um, Steiner's feed into this was awesome, by the way. Very well done. Steiner then hits the exploder, and then yes. Steiner recliner on Mike Awesome. And then all of a sudden, oh my. Goldberg's music starts playing. So it starts playing, and I, it, when it hits, I was confused because I couldn't hear it. I was like, do I hear a song playing? I also am unsure if Scott Steiner ever heard it because he keeps the fucking Steiner recliner in until the <laughs> point where they start showing the Tron. Like, I don't know if he, yeah, I don't know if he ever heard the music. Well, they, they actually, for, you know, in WCW, for whatever reason, like, Ric Flair does a little bit later, too, when the music hits. They don't really sell it until they're done with their thoughts sure, or whatever okay. they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. In WWF, it's like the second, you know, you got to huh? get off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, whoa, what is that? Yeah. Uh, so my first thought here is there's no fucking way Goldberg's here on Thunder in the later part of 2000. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I was correct. But uh, it does show the security backstage. And of course, it is R&B security. So Tank Abbott comes out of the door. Yes. And he is full Goldberg mode. <laughs> he is doing all of the Goldberg things. With this is a very rare security. mode. Not many people have unlocked this mode, but Tank Abbott does it pretty well. Tank Abbott taps into it maybe more than Goldberg ever has because he, then he hurts Scott Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't stop hurting Scott Steiner. So. Uh, so Tank Abbott does the Goldberg theatrics all the way out to the ramp, even to the ramp with the sparklers. Scott Steiner has to stop doing the Steiner recliner to watch this, by the way. Well, yeah, because well, it's fucking crazy. I mean, the theatrics are nuts. You <laughs> gotta give him respect gnarly. for this. Um, Steiner then walks up the ramp and kicks his fucking ass. Then Rick Steiner comes out, and then he jumps Steiner with Tank Abbott. Yes, they and both- then Mike Awesome joins in. So it's a three on one assault right now. Correct. And then Tank Abbott. <laughs> Punches the shit out of Scott Steiner. <laughs> right? So Steiner is getting the best of the three. Like, Mike Awesome runs up the ramp and gets fucking Steiner lined. He's beaten up both of these guys. And then Tank Abbott's punch is what lays out Scott. Probably because he was for real. 
Yeah. Probably do. I believe it. Well, all of a sudden you hear a crazy engine revving up. <laughs> and I was like, what is I thought happening? It was the ambulance at first. I didn't know what it was, but holy shit. The Goldberg monster truck <laughs> is here. How much of a pain in the ass must it have been to bring this fucking thing into the building? Every it- fucking week they had to do something with this monster truck. Because like. I don't think they had Goldberg on any of these shows with the monster truck. No, no, no he, like, he was out. Yeah, yeah. They said we got the monster truck though. Yeah, it's Goldberg enough, you know. Oh, I think Goldberg's in there. He must be driving that, right, guys? It's to- yeah, it's totally guys? blacked out windows and yeah. shit. That's Goldberg, right, <laughs> guys? Guys, <laughs> right? Yeah, Goldberg monster truck. Which ta- you hear the revving? It's I. F- I swear it's a good minute of them selling, hearing the sounds before you see the monster truck slowly roll up to the side of the ramp or side of the stage. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, Scott Steiner then tosses Rick and Tank on top of the Goldberg monster truck. All, so off the side of the stage, and they leap up onto the hood of the Goldberg monster truck. They're both laying flat on the hood. And the monster truck backs up and leaves <laughs> with them on top. That's with them how, on it. Yes, yes. <laughs> them hanging on it, trying to not fall off. So that's how they're gone. That's how they get out of the seg with them two. And then Mike Awesome gets into the ambulance himself and loses on purpose. Okay. I is okay. Mike Awesome That's gets into the driver's seat that is and correct. then the bell rings. I, in my mind, I thought the gimmick was you have to incapacitate your opponent and put them into the back of the ambulance. I didn't oh, realize you, you mistook this part. for a company that cared about <laughs> how this actually ended. Whatever the set, whatever ends the segment is what ends the segment. So Scott Steiner won this match. That's correct. Yes, yes, because he he put him in the ambulance, shut the door. No, uh, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Mike Awesome put shut himself <laughs> yes, in yes. and shut the door. Correct. Okay. Right. And that, he, that's how you win. You have to shut the door, and he shut the door. And Mike Awesome door. shut the door, so he won. Yes, he yes. He lost. Scott Steiner won. Right. <laughs> because he's in the ambulance, and the ambulance drives off because there's no ambulance driver. Right. So and there's a Goldberg awesome monster truck running around with <laughs> Rick and Tank Abbott on, on it. The just hood. so if anybody wants to go save them, you probably still can. Ah, it's fine. Yeah, actually, I don't think anyone wants to save Rick <laughs> no, Steiner we, anymore. So you can leave him. <laughs> Sorry, anymore, buddy. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> We're bringing back the Goldberg monster truck now for you. <laughs> so it shows Canyon in headgear at the hospital. Because Mike Awesome threw him off the triple cage. <laughs> uh, and that is why he's the career killer. Yeah, so we go to a pre-tape. Mike Tanay is here with Canyon uh, at the hospital. Yes. There's no audio. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. There's audio. <laughs> I thought it was going to be another one of those things where we don't get any audio. Canyon was right. talking for at least like 30 seconds before audio cuts yeah, in. That was a, we don't need to hear that. Conan definitely so he, doesn't. Here's the, here's the gist of it here. This is basically setting up Canyon's heel turn. So Tanay says Canyon has suffered damage to his spine. Kenyon says Spinal. he doesn't know if he'll ever <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know if he'll ever walk again. Kenyon says he went into the cage match to help DDP because he has been such a big supporter of his. Right. Today he said, well, if DDP is such a big supporter, why is DDP out walking? And here you are. You can't even walk. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Kenyon says, no, nah, man, it's cool. I still respect Paige a lot. And we can confirm at a later date that he does not respect Paige and he will fuck him up. <laughs> and he will fucking, yeah, Kenyon Cutter, his whole family. Yeah, it's over for you, buddy. Uh, and then Paige gets a strike for a shitty ass promo. So I mean, uh, you really have to, <laughs> and then and then Paige releases a book, and then and then and you know he stalks yeah, right. Taker's wife, and yeah, uh, just it's not it's not looking oh, good man. for It's a for long Paige. Uh, interview here with Canyon, though. Yeah, you're right. And Paige didn't address any of this or say anything. He was here, by the way. He, he was in the parking lot earlier. He was cutting Lex Luger off as he tries to leave the locker. Room. Yeah, he, he just left too. He's like, I'm in here. Okay, so as as James said, he's in the hospital in bed. He's in a halo, which is the big fucking like contraption that straps. Yeah. Yes. So I have an observer note here about this, by the way, this interview. Oh, okay. Uh, Meltzer writes back to Thunder. The Canyon interview was so hokey with him paralyzed and in a halo, but clearly moving his head and the halo not moving, showing it wasn't screwed in. Apparently, this was done in more than one take because the first take uh, was where they noticed that this was a problem and he did it less the second time. He also says that he thinks that this was them. I don't know if this is true. I mean, this is Meltzer just probably being unhappy here. He says that he feels like this was a draws reference. Could have been. Which would be fucked up. Uh, So we got backstage. Shane Douglas gets a phone call and uh, he thinks it's from Eric Bischoff. Yeah, hold on. This might be Eric, guys. Come on. And it's actually the exact fucking opposite. It is somehow both a chronic at the same time. <laughs> hey, I'm he, talking to chronic. Dude, he, says, dude, he, he says, hello, chronic. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
Yeah, they want to match with me tonight? You jackasses got more muscles between those ears than I thought. Well, listen to the sound of this kissing my ass. And then he smashes the phone into his ass. He <laughs> pops the boys. All the boys think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says, all right, boys, how about you, you know, close all the doors. Just make sure there's no chance they'll get in here. And the boys say, ah, yeah, I heard enough. And they all leave. Ah. Yeah, they all, <laughs> the entire New Blood walk out on Shane Douglas uh, to set him up for catastrophe. Yeah, so I just want to also make sure that we understand that Chronic on the phone said they wanted a three-way dance with Shane Douglas tonight. Okay, please uh, remember that this. That is not what we get. Yeah, that is well, not what we get. it is or isn't, James. We're not too sure. Because the commentators think it is. Shane Douglas thinks it is. And I, I don't know who else thinks it is, but it's not what happens. Well, it shows moments ago here as we come back from commercial and Chronic came in to the room with Shane Douglas in it. They had the tag team titles on. They beat the shit out of Shane Douglas and dragged him to the ring. Dude, on commentary, Shivani says, well, Chronic made the call on the cell phone and the French fries tried to barricade himself in the locker room. He, he didn't mean to say like he fixes it, but he 100% says French fries. So now we have Shane Douglas versus Chronic in the first ever three-way dance two-on-one handicap match. It's me and match creator and DK <laughs> trying to come up with a tournament. <laughs> so Shane Douglas has been dragging the ring by Chronic. They get to the ring. Shane Douglas takes out the Nux and he starts hitting Brian Adams with the Nux. <laughs> and I guess it didn't hurt that bad because Brian Adams decides not to sell it. I can tell you right fucking now that working with Chronic at this time was probably the biggest pain in the fucking <laughs> ass. Dude, it had to be horrible. <laughs> they never sold so for shit. Bad. They never sold for shit, Tony. Chronic are so unbelievably juiced right now. They oh probably can't even think straight. I'm pretty sure like they're thinking in like jagged lines. There's like no way <laughs> that no, these dudes yeah, are operating yeah. on a normal human level. Like Brian Adams I just want everybody to realize, look at Brian Adams from 97 and then look at Brian Adams right now it's in 2000. Insane, yeah. it is, and look at Brian Adams in the WWF even. Night it and is day. unreal how juiced he is right now. Brian Clark and, isn't much better. He's, he might be even bigger than yeah, Brian Yeah, but Brian Adams. Clark is like legendarily sure, juiced his whole that's true. career. That's true. He um, and he too. always looked great. Yeah. Uh, but Adams is like egregious. Like it is yeah. fucked up really. Dude, is, like, that what he, is that what Shane Douglas hit him with Nux? I thought it was like a chain or something. Yeah. He, or he made like a... Uh, um, I oh, don't know the, the word for it. I know it. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, knuckle gimmick. I don't know what yeah, you call it. Yeah. Knuckle duster. Though. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a yeah. knuckle duster. Yeah. That's right. He like made it out of paper or something. So as James said, he punches him in the head. Fucking homeboy doesn't sell it. Then the referee, the bell has rung, by the way. The match has started. So the referee has to point to Shane Douglas to admonish him for this. And Shane Douglas tucks it into the front pocket of his pants. And it's never brought up again. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think they called this spot. <laughs> they just did that. Oh, because it's a three-way dance, two on one handicap match. You know the rules, right, guys? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, so Brian Clark hits a pump handle power slam. You call it Brian? by his fucking name, motherfucker. That is the meltdown. Oh, I'm so sorry. How could I forget? <laughs> well, Brian Adams hits deep sea diverticulitis. <laughs> It's not fucking call that. What fucking call? Oh my fucking, fucking god! I'm so you sorry. Bitch, bastard, I'm so you control sorry. F your notes right now, baby. Uh, control F five your dude, notes. I just controlled. I did. <laughs> control alt delete and turn I, off I'm your sorry, sorry. modem Brian, right now. Brian Adams hits the verdict. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you right? so much. All right, anyway, I swore, I dude. The camera angle the show to this. I swore he dumped him on his head the same way he dumped Albert. Uh, Brock dumped Albert on his head. Oh right. I no, it was just shitty. Yeah, it was just bad. Yeah. So then they knock Shane Douglas to the outside, and I'll, literally all I'm thinking as I'm watching this is like, I can't imagine working with these fucking guys. No way. Like, I no. can't in imagine two on one, with these guys. especially. Just in general, I can't yeah. imagine like calling shit. With yeah, chronic. like they are so up their own ass. I can like just tell like this is like <laughs> this is such a pain in the fucking ass. Like if I was like no way I'm putting a belt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Dude. you show up to work and because I've I've heard stories that they were like historically pains in the ass to yes, work with. Yeah, and Dude, like but maybe they had no choice. They were fucking. They just went out there and did whatever the fuck they want. They squashed dudes. You that's what I'm saying. The like, on them. they got over. Yeah, I mean that's what they did and and like refused to fucking can sell and like <laughs> I'd have been like look I don't know what the fuck we're doing yeah, we're doing you I don't know <laughs> I like alright I guess they're doing this but yeah yeah they I mean I don't you know they got the 201 three way bro. dance yeah hey, no, they I mean, got a reality check when they came in and fought dude, the brothers dude, I'm a big Brian Clark guy that. don't get me wrong Thank big so Brian much. Clark guy Brian Adams is you know a bitch I, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah! <laughs> then get a reality check face and take her and Kate is crazy. Yeah, that is Dude, crazy. And there were never seen from so again bad. after that. That was did, it for that. Did you forever. know that DDP and Canyon have a ta WCW tag title match in a cage at SummerSlam against the Brothers of Destruction? No. This happens. This is really? the thing that happened. Yeah, we can I'll watch it. That horrible. We should watch it or watch this. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. It, I, did, I found this out the other day because I was like, we were doing GM mode and talking about cage matches at SummerSlam, and that came up. I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Wow. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. I'm sure it was tremendous. Well, they knock uh, Shane Douglas to the outside, and Douglas grabs the tag team belts, and he holds them up for some reason, and then he turns got the around. That's what, all, that's all what Bischoff and Russo wanted, the belts, so he got the belts. Yeah, well, I don't know if you knew this or not, but there's two big ass <laughs> bastards still in the ring, and you're loopy on the ramp. So I don't know where you're going with those. Douglas grabs the tag belts, and well, he's not going anywhere because he turns around and gets steamrolled by a fucking table. <laughs> Who is that? What is that? Oh my god! That's the wall! That's the wall bro. <laughs> Dude, a fucking table rushing down the ramp and smashing into Shane Douglas. I was fucking dying, dude. I, dude, I didn't know what was going on. Me neither. I didn't either until they said that's. And I love how they said it. They said that's the wall. I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I think he got kicked out of the new blood or something, or like Shane he, Douglas well, has fucking with him or something. Because Sergeant A Wall. That's soon. I don't think it's happening. Yeah, yet. yeah, yeah. I know, but Sergeant A Wall. He gets recruited as a sergeant and A Wall. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, uh, right. Yes, yeah, I yeah. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so the wall just carries around a table Which all the awesome. time. Just all the time. That's his thing. Everyone at WCW had a thing, and it didn't really matter how like ridiculous it was. Like this dude just carries around a big ass table all the time. It doesn't matter. It's his <laughs> no, thing. Yeah, whatever. And like we're cool with it. It's all yeah, right. Yeah, I was cool with it. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's 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 insane to have this guy walk around. It is I just wanna, fucking crazy. I just want to make well, sure we would touch just on walk that. With a stretcher. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but like the wall was like all the time. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? That's yeah, just crazy. It's right. like the revenge <laughs> entrance where they come out with a weapon. The wall yeah. just a random, yeah, just whatever. Yeah, no works. mercy entrance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the wall sets the table up and then choke slams Shane Douglas to the table on the outside. This is no DQ. Yeah, it's a two on one <laughs> handicap three way dance. Okay. Is false count anywhere or not? The or commentators whatever. do say this is a three way dance, by the way. Sure, it's a two on one handicap they, three way dance. And they say that Chronic wanted it that way. Because, well, <laughs> because they're fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, they've never seen a three way dance. And they never caught a guy on a dive either, by the way, as we find out right now. And you know what's funny is they never ever do, and they never learn how to or try <laughs> and to. And they get rewarded or... for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the wall tosses Shane Douglas back into the fucking Gorilla ring. Gorilla press style. And then Chronic hits high times on Shane Douglas. And I they win the three way dance and with one pin. So, yeah, wall Gorilla presses Shane over the top rope into Chronic, who definitely were supposed to catch him, and they, neither, that. neither of them put their hands up, and he just falls in between the ropes and their bodies and fucking crumbles, <laughs> and then yes. And I bet you he didn't say a word to him when they got backstage. Oh, no. what, 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 what are you gonna say? What the fuck are you gonna say to no Chronic? <laughs> 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 so yeah, Chronic hit high times, then Brian Clark gets the pin, and they announced that Chronic are the winners. Yeah, yeah the three -way they won. Dance, Chronic wins. Yes. Yeah, they great. won the three way dance two on one handicap match. Correct. Elimination style. WCW wins again, man. Of course, For man. For all the haters Fuck. out there, you know, well, who's yeah, doing like a real fucking bitch? <laughs> yeah, high time. <laughs> Chronic. So Ric Flair is now on the way to the ring with his new title belt and his Hawaiian best. <laughs> <laughs> and Nitro starts at 7 p.m. Do not forget that. <laughs> yes, please don't. <laughs> so now it's time for the Ric Flair Town Hall. That's uh, a crazy Flair, promo. It is. Well, Flair has a lot to say and doesn't Always. remember any of it. Always. So Flair with Big Gold is out here. It's his 15th time holding this belt. And there's a 15, pretty cool moment. Yeah, there's a 15-time chant, too, which I thought was actually pretty cute. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, the crowd obviously really respects Flair and like, sure. especially in WCW, you know, he's yeah, a big yeah, deal yeah, no matter yeah, what. Sure. Um, he got they, played out like fucking a fool most of the time. They probably, you know, I understand Flair is good at looking like the fool. He is very good he at it. He's great at it. Um, But, you know, you should also protect him a little bit probably because Vince like, yeah. fuck that. No way. Yeah, no, he definitely well, um, didn't want to. They recapped on Monday where Jared hits Flair in the head with a guitar after Rick said he'd leave the sport if he couldn't beat his son at the Great American Bash. Then Flair had a match with Jarrett on that show, beat him with an inside cradle and a black shirt to win the title. <laughs> and then David Flair broke a bottle over Flair's head after the match. I think yeah, that's yeah. what it was. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So uh, Flair's out here. 
He puts over Jarrett. He says he was lucky to beat him, but he still beat him. See, he that's did. all it takes sometimes. It's like, you know what I mean? Like He, he yeah, gives him he, daps, yeah. Yeah, he gives him daps, but then he also says, I fuck still you. beat you. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. I got the belt. And he talks about his home life, and he says his son was brainwashed by Vince Russo. Oh, no. Which is crazy, by the way. I can't imagine. That's <laughs> fucking nuts. Well, you know, some people get lonely. And Flair says, no offense to Italians. I don't have any problem with Italians. I said, no. No, 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 no please. <laughs> but Russo is a skinny little Italian kid who grew up in the Bronx. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. All skinny little Italian kids <laughs> love my 4D fit. <laughs> they flock to me for my 4D fit. That's what he said. Uh, Flair says that his papa. Now this is a this is where the shit goes crazy. Russo's right here. dad. He's talking about. Yes, Flair says that Russo's papa told Russo that he needs to be like Bruno San Martino, the champion of the WWWF. And the crowd and that, said, "Whoa, woo. yeah!" And Russo said, "Oh, papa, I admire Bruno, but he's a little bit too slow." And I want to be slicker. And Papa said, oh, no, 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 Vinny. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you got to be like Bruno or I'll fucking kick your ass. <laughs> I don't want to be like Bruno San Martino. <laughs> well, that's too damn bad. <laughs> he says that, uh, Flair says that Russo, they ended up getting a little cable TV box. Yeah. Got a little, got a little network out of Atlanta, money. Georgia. A little money. TBS. TBS. Yeah. Uh, and he sees Ric Flair. And he wants to be just like Ric Flair. And he said, Papa, Daddy, Mama, come see. And your Daddy came in the room horrified. And he said, no, turn that off. And you said, Papa, I want to just be like him. Woo! And your Mama went, oh, no, Vinny. This is a good Catholic family. You can't be like the nature boy. You can't style and profile. That's what his mom said. <laughs> and Papa said, Vinny, Vinny, you can't be like the nature boy. You got no muscles. You got no girlfriends. You got no long limousine. <laughs> You can't be the nature boy. <laughs> you got he's, no bitches. <laughs> he's doing this fucking voice. Yeah, you got no bitches. <laughs> well, well, no offense to the Italians. No offense to the Italians, he says. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, so Russo begs his dad to be like Flair, and he says, you cannot be like the nature boy. Be Bruno, which would have been way better off for him anyway. Well, or maybe like not doing any of this right would have been. That was super sweet. Maybe you should have got that cable TV box, really. <laughs> well, so, you know, when you get money, you get the cable TV. Flair says Russo is a big, skinny little punk with no <laughs> muscles with, with a, a checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> um, Russo says he can't control, or uh, Flair says Russo can't control Flair. He can't control Sting, Luger, or Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And Russo dude. wrote all these big checks, but in the end, you still can't be like the nature boy. You can't be us. Flair says the world title belongs to the old generation. Super based. That he is said, this awesome. is tradition based. He said, in this sport, having this title is all there is based. He's yeah. spitting. <laughs> Flair says Russo is trying to live his life vicariously through his son. And then Jeff Jarrett comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of this outlandish vaudeville crap. You are a notorious deadbeat dad. You got my stolen property, and I'm fixing to step in this ring and pull it out of your ass. Notorious deadbeat dad is nuts, by the way. I just want to make sure we cover that. Jared's a, That's nuts. Uh, I, St I mean, you can't touch Steiner, but Jared's promos in WCW were also fucking hilarious. Yeah, they were awesome. Uh, well, Flair and Jared start fighting immediately when they get in the ring. And then Crowbar is here. No. And David Flair in WCW UK tour shirt. <laughs> well, you love that tour. Yeah, they're jumping Ric Flair. But wait a minute. <laughs> oh, he's here. He's here. Come on down. It's Arn Anderson. With it's a, Arn Anderson. With a log. <laughs> got a stick. <laughs> he's legit got a tree stump. I don't know what the fuck. It's a log for real. So Arn Anderson uh, gets them all out. And he's in the ring with Flair, and Flair's on the ground, and Arn Anderson starts cutting a promo. Yes. Uh, he says that Russo woke up a sleeping dog last week, and he's not a morning person, and he woke up grumpy. <laughs> 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 and Arn says, I was retired, and I was fine doing menial backstage shit, but I'm a wrestler. Yeah. And the crowd said, yes. This is what I do. Yeah, that's Hope right. That you old school mentality right. tells me, I come home, David, and one of my kids sitting on the floor lighting a fire. I don't worry about women's groups saying it's child abuse or the neighbors. I jerk his ass up. I take my belt off and I tear his ass up. I said, oh, Joe, okay. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, well, I just want to make sure every I just want to make sure everybody understands what he just said, just because it's crazy. It is nuts. So he jerks his ass <laughs> up, <laughs> takes off his belt after jerking his ass up and he tears, tears his, his ass, ass up. up. <laughs> That's horseman okay. style. Okay. That's the old generation. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
tradition, motherfucker. <laughs> well, he's lucky he didn't load up that Glock and put it on his head. <laughs> yeah, but he's lucky he didn't get the Glock and jerk his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Alan Belea would have did. I'll fucking tell you that much, though, goddammit. it. loaded the Glock and jerked Alan his Belea ass. Alan Belea would have stuffed his ass full of Glocks. <laughs> <laughs> Put on the strap. Yeah. Jerking his ass off. Tear that ass up. <laughs> well, they're going to get it. They're going to get a pizza Edison flare. <laughs> Horseman style. Yeah, he says logs and baseball bats are not the answer. What are you talking yeah, that's about? Right. You're right. He says you got to first be a man to be a wrestler, and if you're ever going to be a wrestler, you got to take that snake that's sitting in New York and quit letting him control your head. And you're O for everything, New Blood. And I'm telling you, Double J, you remember this, huh? Dustin Rhodes doesn't know what that is. I'll tell you that no, much. No, he's he doesn't. The four Horsemen taunt. He was he getting his ass torn up, <laughs> jerked off, <laughs> in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Platinum style. <laughs> this man is 34 years old getting his ass torn up. <laughs> Jerk off. <laughs> Jerk off. <laughs> he said in about 10 minutes, you're going to get a dose of Anderson and Flair. Horseman style. <laughs> Why did we need 10 minutes for this? Because of what fucking happens next? They could have just did the match here? Yeah, to understand, the four horsemen are very over in WCW, all right? There's not there's not many acts that are over like this. You gotta give them time. Fucking Flair and Arn do not change gear. They don't. They just come out in what they're wearing. Oh, you want to keep talking like that? You can just <laughs> jerk up, jerk off. <laughs> Dude, the bar was like, jerk off my ass or whatever. <laughs> then I'm waiting. Horseman yeah, style. Jerked up and jerked <laughs> off at the same time. <laughs> That's what we do in deadlock. We <laughs> jerk up and jerk off your jerk ass. <laughs> deadlock style. <laughs> And that's not everything. No logs over here. I'll tell you that, bro. No fucking logs <laughs> in that ass. And there never will be. I'll tell you that. Oh, <laughs> So we go to a pre-tape. Vampiro is here with a sting mask. In hell? I don't know where yeah. he's here. Backstage catering. Okay. Vampiro says. <laughs> Doctor's for, office. <laughs> Vampiro says for 10 fucking years, Sting, you taught the talk. Now, can you walk the walk? A reminder, Sting has been the world heavyweight champion. Vampiro <laughs> is an undercard guy. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone thinks is just a Sting ripoff. So he burns the Sting mask and he tells him that he is going to take him to hell. Yeah, he's ready. He's ready to yeah. take him to hell. He's taking him down to the undercard, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking him to Worldwide, brother. So now it's time for the Sting Town Hall. Yeah, so Sting comes out after Vampiro's promo. I guess it's after commercial. And uh, Sting says... Cut the music! Cut the damn music! <laughs> he said, Vampiro, thanks for pointing out that I've talked the talk for 10 years, but don't forget, I've also walked the walk. Oh, okay, well, that sells that. Then. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he said, I've been real nice and real kind and real patient, and I'm real close to Vampiro to snapping, and perhaps I should even blow a gasket. Tonight, Vampiro, I'm going to knock you out right here. So Vampiro comes to out. tear your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to trick you up, and I'm going to trick you off. Sting style. <laughs> Steve style. No logs, brother. <laughs> there better not be any logs in there. <laughs> Vampiro. <laughs> Vampiro comes out on the ramp, and he says, Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. <laughs> okay. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Vampiro What's says, up, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> Sting does have the balls to finish the job. He handcuffed him in the cage. He left him there to just chill, I guess. So what happened? You don't get the balls to cross the line and finish the job? Because you know something, Steve? You miserable bastard. Steve. <laughs> you miserable bastard. <laughs> They'd still be picking up fragments of your face off the front row. Or maybe you just don't get it. Maybe there's a bit of you that likes me. Uh, maybe there's a bit of you inside that wants to be like me. But I promise you something, Steve. Shivani's had enough at this point. He, on, on commentary, he says, it's Sting. <laughs> it's Sting. <laughs> I told you I was going to take you to hell, and that's what I'm going to do. And at the American Bash, whatever it's called, whatever, the American Bash. Dude, Tony Shivani is like Over the it. most elite Sting respecter of all time. Yeah, yeah, he does yeah, love that is. fucker. At the American Bash, it's going to be an Inferno match, and to win that match, you're going to have to light your opponent on fire. Well, Sting's response is, you're psycho, <laughs> definitely <laughs> psycho bonehead. <laughs> psycho, all right. We're not having an inferno match. 
Anyway, to the undercard we got. <laughs> get the fuck down there. You are teaming with Raven. Go get down there. <laughs> yeah, get, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, ICP's coming and they need someone to hang out with. You gotta go. Misfits are here. We got come the great Muda for you, brother. Yeah, Let's get come the fuck on out now. of here. Yeah, that, we're dude. sending him down in the midcard just to spite you. <laughs> you do his moves and it pisses you me off. You killed the great Muda's yeah. fucking right here, brother. <laughs> So uh, he says, what, are we going to torch each other? And Vampiro said, yes, yeah, Steve, I am psycho. And Sting, you don't have a choice. He's talking to two different guys here. I don't know what's going on. Well, Survivor says, of course he has a choice. And then it shows a shot of the ring. And s- some of the ring ropes are on fire. I want to I make sure we understand this. It shows Vampiro staring. Yes. Waiting. For a begging long time. Yes. Anybody to light these fucking ropes on fire. He is begging somebody it's to light these ropes on fire. An awkward amount of time for sure. And they show it and it's it's not on like it it more looks like flames are leaking on parts of the edges of the ropes. And Sting is standing in the middle of the ring, hands on his hips, looking very disappointed. And then at some point they give up on like trying to hide the guy setting it on fire. They legit show a top down shot. You can see two dudes on the floor with torches just going across the ropes <laughs> trying Dude, the to light first, this fucking shit on fire. First fucking shot they showed, there's a guy with a torch <laughs> right in front. <laughs> like you can, he's just standing there with a torch trying to light yeah, the ropes right. on fire. Dude, let me explain this torch. It's not just like a little lighter. It's like a propane tank Propa- he's yeah. holding, like trying to light this shit. It's fucking it's ridiculous. They must have. They, I think they put the same flame retardant goo that Cody Rose used at AEW <laughs> on great. the ropes. Yeah, we're going awesome. Yeah, we're going yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's great. Um, Sting, of course, already knows that this feud fucking sucks. He's so um, over it, bro. You can see it on his face, bro. Historically, Vampiro hated this fucking feud and thought it sucked. He thought it, um, it did, and it ruined his career. He said he said it ruined his career. Yeah, he said it ruined his fucking run. Um, and I don't know if it has anything to do with Steve or Sting, as you would call him. Either one. Um, but I will say that for a feud that was interesting on paper, this shit stunk like ass. And they do <laughs> it did stink like shit. And they <laughs> they do the the Inferno match at Great American Bash. I don't know. Have we watched that for anything? We have I think not, so. No. No. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to do that because it is a doozy. Um. So yeah. So the ropes are. They give up. They give up. And they, they just, keep going. Like they do. Why the fuck didn't they just stop this feud? I've been like, all right, we're gonna do something else with Sting. It's one a of our long biggest feud, right? draws. It's like three, four months. It, 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 I swear to God, it. I feel like it doesn't stop until like the end of like WWE. I swear. Yeah, you might be right. It, 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 yeah, it, maybe I feel you're right. like. Towards the end, they're still fucking talking about this Vampiro and Sting Well, it's a thing. legendary lifelong rivalry that they're trying to Dude, do here. no one gives a fuck. Can like, Sting get back to the upper guard and do some shit? <laughs> like, you had Sting title, out please? there with fucking Lieutenant Loco, and then he's Sting fucking playing around. With- yeah, come on, man. Golly. Well, they zoom in tight on Sting's to not show the f- not on fire ropes. Sting takes his jacket off and does the most, like, fuck you, like, smacking his jacket against the ropes to put out the flames that are already out. And then he gets on the second rope, yells, woo, and then leaves <laughs> through the ropes. Now, what do you think the plan was for these ropes if they did actually engulf them in flames? Like, there's a match next. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't care about that. We, you know, like, <laughs> okay. we're just so good it looks cool, you know? <laughs> well, it didn't. Yeah, no, neither of those things happened. Didn't I thought they cool. were going to bloodbath them. I, you know, well, I think they had a couple of options here, and I don't think any of them would have worked. They probably no. missed with a bloodbath. The bloodbath like, always goes wrong. The fire yeah. obviously didn't go fucking well either, so. Yeah, well, I don't even know what was going on with this. Hey, you think they ever tested it? They just do them? No, no way they tested yeah, shit. They're like, yeah, probably right. Well, they probably thought like, oh, well, there's no, you know, we got six fucking huge blow torches. This should be fine. Like, the ropes will catch <laughs> on fire. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> Steve, Steve probably said, you guys should probably <laughs> test this. They said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're in an undercard feud with Vampiro. Yeah. We don't you care. You're stuck with Vampiro. We're not listening to you until you're out of this. You put me in this. We're not listening to you until you get yeah. out of that. Yeah, whenever you get unbooked from this stupid ass feud, you can get out with us. You book me. I don't care. <laughs> we got to go talk to Chronic. They got something to fucking complain about. All right. We apologize. Uh, Tony fucking got engulfed in flames from the. Damn it, dude. The WCW crew WCW, ran up and started yeah, setting them on fire. That's. Fucked yeah, up, man. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So Shane Douglas tries to get Jeff Jarrett to help him by beating the shit out of Flair and Arn tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. He's a Bischoff and 
Russo are going to be pissed about this. And Jared says, they're not going to be pissed at me. I'm the chosen one. That's his excuse. I'm the chosen one, so they won't be mad. Which is right. <laughs> yeah, that is right. And Shane says, you can make this right. you got to beat the shit out of Flair and Arn, and the new blood are waiting on the bus, and we're going to get the hell out of Dodge. Shane Douglas completely not watching any part of the show. He was out there with Hulk Hogan earlier in the night, who was holding the keys to the bus. <laughs> Nothing And he came out and said, I brain. got the keys, brother. Yes, that he started the show with this, but we forgot this already. So now it's time for Ric Flair and Arn Anderson versus David Flair and Crowbar and Daphne, maybe? I don't know. Okay, you need to tell me what this match is because I <laughs> got lost like oh, I've well. never been lost before. Well, um, it's simply a three-way dance, two-on-one, three-on-one handicap. Well, they fuck up immediately, match. James. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's But not chronic <laughs> style, right? Oh, well, kind of. <laughs> they fuck up immediately by playing Crowbar and David Flair's theme. But then it changes to Ric Flair's theme, and yeah, then sorry about that. Flair comes out on his own in the same outfit he just had on in a segment ago, so not in his gear or anything. We're out of the Ric Flair gear era. Then it shows- I'm going to assume that it played their music, they didn't come out, then they played Flair's music. Flair doesn't come out, but then he does come out, and it's because of what happens next. Oh, so they cut it, and it doesn't make sense because of this. Right. Okay, because they do show a shot of the back- of David Flair and Crowbar and Daphne all jumping Arn Anderson in the bag. By <laughs> With the way. shirt off. They ripped his shirt off. <laughs> they ripped his shirt off. Uh, in the Observer, by the way, I did see here that I think Arn Anderson broke his foot like the night before this on Nitro. So that's oh why he's God. not wrestling wow. here. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> so he was meant to be wrestling here, and then they had to figure out a way to write him out of the match instead of just making a whole different match. He had the worst of luck all the time. I know. I know. I feel like he was always like, oh, I'm coming back. Ah, fuck. Never mind. Yeah, so Jared then jumps Ric Flair on the stage, uh, and they play Jared's music for a second. As he's like already mid jumping him, and then they start playing it. The sound guy's really fucked up tonight, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, so Flair is now beating the shit out of Jared as he starts coming back in church shoes. Uh, Crowbar and David Flair jump in and. They jump Flair as Daphne stands on the rope screaming in the ring. Dude, Rick chops Jarrett like all the way down the ramp. It's just a chop, chop, chop to get down the ring and then they ring the bell. So David Flair then locks in the figure four on Rick Flair after they assault him. So Crowbar, David Flair, Jeff Jarrett, Daphne. and Daphne are all whooping J Rick Flair's <laughs> ass while Charles Robinson has already rung the bell and is watching and is okay with this. Four on one, three way <laughs> dance. <laughs> Handicap. Elimination. Tag team. <laughs> tag team? Submission. All right. Tornado tag. Texas well, tornado. Ta oh, that might line up, James. I style. <laughs> <laughs> it went <out> everywhere. <laughs> so Jared goes for the figure floor on Flair, and then Flair pokes he him in the eye. In. Well, he pokes him in the eye, and then they stomp out fucking uh, Flair. And then David Flair puts the figure four on Rick. Uh, in the middle yeah. of the ring. So this is meant to be, I guess, the end of the match. But, Aru! The Wolfpack theme hits. Kevin Nash in gear comes to the ring, and he's that's, also okay, in the match. That's, that's crazy. In gear Kevin <laughs> yeah. Nash for a run-in is nuts. I just want people to realize that happens like, you can probably count Never. like on one hand yeah, this how many times Kevin time. Nash runs in in gear. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe the only other time was when he powerbombed Jarrett last week, but he might have had a match on that show. Yeah, that's nuts. So yeah, he, he comes out in gear. He was just in gear. <laughs> yeah, he's in gear. Comes out to make the fucking With save. Boots. Yeah, he strapped the boots up for the run in. He might be in the match. <laughs> he might be a participant. He might that's have replaced nuts. Arn. I don't know. Uh, so Jared tries to cut Nash off of the ramp. Nash annihilates him with a big boot. It was awesome. In the okay, this is this is this truly, is the match, brother, dude. Big boot. Call to it Jarrett. as you see it, brother. Uh, <laughs> Jared hit with the big boot on the ramp. At the same time, Ric Flair inside cradles Daphne in the ring and pins her and wins the match, and they ring the bell. So Daphne was in the match and she lost to Ric Flair. Yeah, Cajun style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Inside cradle. Flair has officially a win over Daphne. I didn't know she was in the match. And she was, and she always was from the beginning. <laughs> I don't think 
so. Yeah, I don't think well, so. It, well, because you didn't listen to the rules when I was I'm, explaining I'm them. But sorry, anybody that was listening to the podcast that listened to the rules <laughs> knows exactly <laughs> the type of match this was because I played it up for Well, them. I'm waiting to hear back from them about what they thought this match was because I don't know if everyone got it. Maybe I'm oh, the only well, one. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, they don't need to guess. They know it because I told them. <laughs> And Flair inside cradles Daphne and wins the match. Bell I, rang. I guess it did Write happen. it down in the history books. Well, Daphne took an L to Ric Flair. Mike Awesome went into an ambulance and lost the ambulance match as well. And that's, I guess that well, also happened. That's a question that a lot of people have been a- asking and has been answering tonight. What happens no if you go into the ambulance? <laughs> you lose. That's been answered. Yeah, there you go. Um, so then Flair locks the figure four in on Daphne. <laughs> Dude, he locks the figure four on Daphne. At the same time, Jeff Jarrett gets in the ring, hits Nash in the head with a chair that bumps Nash. Ric Flair still has the figure four on Daphne. Jeff Jarrett does not care. He is now parading around. Nash gets up on his feet and then chases Jeff Jarrett to the back. And then everyone is gone all of a sudden, except for Charles Robinson and Ric Flair. And Ric Flair, who looks like he is begging Charles Robinson to save his life because he's about to have a heart attack. Yeah, what is that? Why is that? He collapsed on the ramp. Yeah, is he all right? I don't, maybe not. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Unless he was heartbroken that he had to inside cradle Daphne. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. Record. <laughs> no, what, what he was really upset about is he couldn't keep the figure four in longer. He was like, man, I really wish I could have kept that Damn, in longer. Man, that was all I wanted to do tonight yeah. in my dress shoes. Yeah, my church shoes in Hawaii shirt and slacks. <laughs> your protractor, your books say yeah. slacks. <laughs> so, yeah, man, not uh, Nash chases Jared in the back. Fucking dude. So dude. Shane Douglas and Jeff Jarrett are now running to the back. They get in the new blood bus from earlier yes. that Hogan took the keys from. Even on commentary, today says, I thought Hogan had the keys. Shane is waiting for Jeff Jarrett to run onto the bus. Jarrett runs onto the bus. They shut the bus door. We all know, including everyone on this fucking bus, knows that they don't have the keys. And apparently the entire New Blood is in this bus? (laughs) Yes, the entirety of the New Blood. They were waiting for Jarrett. He was the last guy. Or so we thought until... (laughs) Dude, this is so fucking funny. So everyone is, in theory, in the New Blood. On this bus. On this bus, right. Kevin Nash is doing a slow walk towards the bus. He's going to fuck these guys up who are trying to leave. All of a sudden, someone else runs by, like, is running up behind Nash, and then behind him is Booker T, (laughs) Sting, and the rest of the Millionaires Club. M.I.A. Yeah, all the boys. It's Chris Candido in a New Blood shirt. He missed the spot. He is not on the bus. (laughs) (laughs) He's Kevin, walking up, and Nash, Kevin like, Nash fucking flinch steps him. He double takes, and he goes, oh, shit. <laughs> get, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, dude. That was I crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, that was Chris nuts. Candido missing the bus. They don't even say anything about it. Then, the, So the Millionaire's Club, the MIA, all the fucking boys are here, and they all go up to the bus, and they get against the bus, and I said, no fucking way. And they're heaving. And they're, the even, and they're fucking picking the bus up and they flip the new blood school bus over onto its fucking side. That's awesome. It was awesome. I think they killed the new blood. Well, if they didn't, James, someone else was about to. This is, I, look, I have never, <laughs> ever in my life, this might be one of the craziest wrestling outros I've ever seen. And we've it's, seen a lot of crazy wrestling outros. It's the craziest cliffhanger of all time, right? Yeah, well, you know, we had the one where Goldberg got handcuffed to the front of the bus. Oh, and was going to get fucking smashed. This is even better. He was going to die. Yeah. This is better. This is better because it's even more egregious (laughs) than that. So the bus is flipped over on its side and you hear... Oh no! I said, oh, "There's no. no." You know what that means? <laughs> There's no fucking way. And I'm, I'm looking at the camera. The camera's zooming in. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's just there's nothing there. Like, it's a tease, it's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe like, okay, yeah, the monster truck's coming, but it won't right. actually show it. Oh no, they show it. The Goldberg monster truck <laughs> comes in full fucking speed. Dude, I mean, it is going yes. up 200 miles an hour. It looks it like. Le- legit whips around the corner the fastest I've ever seen a vehicle in my life. Goldberg monster truck, <laughs> which, by the way, Goldberg is apparently driving. driving <laughs> <this> thing, <yes. laughs> and I swear to God, he is 
200 miles an hour yes. straight at the flipped over bus and they go we gotta get out of here <laughs> and they go to black they fade to black they don't show it I said no it fades to black on the Goldberg monster truck killing the new blood by running them <laughs> over at 200 miles an hour in a monster truck dude it is I could not stop fucking laughing I couldn't believe it flipped over new blood school bus about to be ran over by Goldberg monster truck driven by Goldberg it is so loud. It's so funny. It it's is so, so funny. loud. It is so loud. It is so funny. Do they like, ever show it? They probably come back next week or something. Remember Fuck. they did that with uh, yeah, you're when right. he was handcuffed on the, the God, bus. God, dude. I cannot fucking believe. I couldn't believe it. It was so goddamn funny, man. It was unbelievable. Yeah, there was a lot going on here. This is... No wrestling, I'll tell you. We've shit. watched some fucked up episodes. <laughs> no way! No way! Dude, we've watched some fucked up episodes of Thunder. This has got to rank up there, right? Yeah. And, you know, coming into this, we just watched it because, you know, it had Horace and Hulk on it. That was funny as hell. Yeah, somebody re- suggested it on the Reddit, and they said Horace and Hulk are fighting. I said, what? Okay. Yeah, but this is, like, crazy. There's a this lot is- more to this than meets the eye. Yeah, it's a legendary Goldberg episode Monster Truck eyes. kills the new blood. <laughs> In their school bus, <laughs> yellow crazy. school bus that they that the MIA and Booker <laughs> T flipped over. And Lieutenant Loco. <laughs> what a goddamn show, man! What a show! Unbelievable. Yeah. This was uh, what a great show without Russo and Bischoff on it, right? Yeah, you're right. Damn, y'all got played up. <laughs> well, there you go. That was WCW Thunder for May seventeenth, two thousand. 